in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on fifty centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you your home thank you for watching be blessed to repent is not just to confess your sin to repent is to lay down the ideology that take you into that realm and bring you into a new philosophy so that we can look at you and see that your thinking pattern has changed let me tell you if your thought life does not change if your mindset does not change you can limit God in your life hallelujah the Bible says they limited God in the wilderness as mighty as God is a man's mentality can limit God for a long time God wanted to bless Abraham but the mindset of the traditional worship the mindset of the culture he was coming from limited God God kept beckoning on him I want to make you a father of nations I want to make you great but Abraham's mind could not cooperate with that which the spirit wanted to do and one day the Lord said Abraham come out of your house I, I, I need to do something to your mind to align with my purposes for your life Abraham come out he said now look at the stars let me give you something to play around with and when he tried counting the stars he said can you count them he said no he said so shall thy seed be finally Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness hallelujah the power of God is not short to change and bring miracles and breakthroughs it's just that we have been taught and, and, and it's my job in the body of Christ to always address imbalances and error on one side we've been taught that everything depends on God you have no role to play you just be born again and there is a smooth ride common sense teaches you that it does not make sense are you following me now then on the other hand we have men who are struggling just using concepts alone and human philosophy forgetting that there must be a God factor in the equation of your life both extremes are very very wrong all through scripture from Genesis to Revelation there has always been a partnership between God through his spirit and a willing vessel that can pay the price and allow his mindset to subscribe to the higher values of heaven hallelujah the difference between brother a and brother b is not the color of their skin is their degree of alignment to the holy spirit how much they have submitted their mindset to take up the higher mindset of the values listen the bible says my thoughts are higher than your thoughts is that true and and that word the the, the greek word word there word of god is logos it means the thoughts of god so the word of god gives you his ideology when you read my books you study my persuasions you study my convictions is that true so if you stay long enough with my books and you open up yourself to the influence of my thought patterns you will begin to think like me even if you've never met me we will talk as though we've been together this is the ministry of the word it's not just to make us speak christian language no the word of god is supposed to transcend it produces a force that force compels your mind to change to align to spiritual things so that when God wants to pass through your life your ideologies will not resist him hallelujah bless you Aaron everybody say transformation are you being transformed it's not enough to come to church and sit down and keep writing is the word of God changing you 
you can limit the power of the word of God. Some of you can choose to walk out of this place. Wow, nice sermon. So this is how koinonia is like. Wonderful. I'm impressed. I'm blessed. That can be your, the, the, the things that you are carrying back home. And someone else can sit down and say, Lord, I'm aware that my mindset is the reason why I am where I am. My mindset has been limiting your work in my life. You want to bless me, but there's something in my life that resists you. You want to lift me. You want to make me great. But there's something and I am aware. So I come to man. He needs to step into your soul realm and take complete charge of your mind your mindset so that your ideologies are a derivative of the word of god not culture there are aspects of culture that are good there are aspects of culture that are devilish devilish they were crafted out by wicked men sponsored by spirits that are not under the influence of the spirit of god and many of us have grown up with these ideologies and although you've gone to school Although you are working, although you are married, that mindset is stopping God from doing certain things in your life. Many of us have gotten mindsets by, from our past. You have a mindset concerning fatherhood. You have a mindset concerning marriage. You have a mindset concerning money, concerning prosperity, concerning poverty, concerning God, concerning the Holy Spirit. These are all mindsets that have been given unto us. By a system that does not honor God. So when we come into his presence. We do not come just to say Lord add to what I have. Sometimes you need to say Lord open me up like a surgery. Right? And pick out everything that does not align with your divine pattern. Everybody say transformation. Listen. If the word of God is truly changing you. Then regardless of the fact that Aaron is from Kaduna State and Ken is from the East, you should have similarities in mindset. Because you have, you have laid down your personal culture to pick up the excellence of the culture of a higher kingdom. Hallelujah. But the issue is that many of us love seeing the power of God. We love seeing the grace of God. We love seeing people fall under the anointing and miracles happen. And there's nothing wrong with that except for the fact that is the word of God changing you. The, the decisions you made last year, if you still make those decisions today in spite of the power of God's word, then that's what they call frustrating the grace of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says the days of our ignorance, God overlooks, right? So if you do not know, God can create a system by his mercy to help you. But where the word of the Lord comes, it comes to build you. It comes to take you out of your current position. Hallelujah. Say, I allow the word of God to change me. Say it, I allow the word of God to change me. The worst evil you can do to yourself is to hold on to your mindset. Hold on to what you had that made you such a failure. It was the failure that brought you to the presence of God. And now God is saying, lay down this thing. Pick up another culture that can take you. Your ministry is grounded because of a mindset that is keeping you. Lay down that mindset and pick up another. Your marriage is not working because there is a mindset that is keeping you. Your relationship is not working because there is a mindset. Men run away from you because there is a mindset. Women run away because there is a mindset. The power of God is far. Favor is far from your life because there is an ideology that stands as an antichrist but when you come to God's presence he tells you lay down this mindset lay down this mindset that's your own responsibility to say Lord all my life I've been taught that you must be a hustler to make it hit it left right and center 
I saw my father hustling. I saw my mother hustling. I saw my elder ones hustling. And God says, uh-uh, the kingdom of God is not haphazard. Come and let me teach you how the economic system of the kingdom works. And you're like, Lord, is there even a system? And he says, yes, there is. You can walk circumspectly. Hallelujah. All your life, you've always known that if a lady wants to marry, she'll go to a harvest with the picture of the person he wants to marry. And one goat. That's all. You've seen people around you dragging goats to harvest to chain a brother and force him to get married. That's how you know it to be done. Now you are ready to get married. And they say, oh yeah, where is your own goat? And God is saying, uh-uh, uh-uh. He says, seek out of the book and read. None shall want her mate. So a new ideology starts coming. And I'm telling you, if you are changing, it will create blessings and create persecutions at the same time. Because you live in an environment with people who have refused to change. So your change begins to frustrate them. If they are not fighting you, you are not changing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Something must change about your life. Everyone is used to bribing. If you want job, give this person through the back door 50,000. And they tell you, look, we're all Christians. In fact, I'm a pastor. As you see me like this, we all did it. And the moment you want to do that, a scripture rises up in you. Something changes. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. And a scripture wells up in you. What fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness? And what communion has light got to do with darkness? And you turn and tell them, I'm going to cry, but my God will give me this job. I will not bribe anybody, no bribery. And they say, look at how stupid you are talking. Nigeria, this thing has been there. He said, uh-uh, I may be a Nigerian, but I function from another realm. There is a kingdom that sponsors my life. And I'm an ambassador. And I can call on the embassy I represent. It may take a while. I may look stupid. But God is able to make it happen. The moment you speak, you mount pressure on God because he's the one you are representing. And for the sake of his reputation, you cause him to step down. But many of us are ashamed at such points. You say, I went to school. How can I start talking about embassy, heaven? I Please, let's, let's be reasonable. What is 50,000? Hallelujah. Before now, your ideology has been the quickest way to be rich is pin down one rich man. Just find a rich, even if he's not born again, you will change him. Pin him down, force him to marry you. That's how they've been taught. And there are many people here as you're sitting down. Some is your parents. They've indirectly warned you. They say, have we not suffered in this life? You say, yes, we have suffered. Say, do you want us to continue like this? Say, no, sir. Say, tough. Complete the puzzle by yourself. What they are telling you indirectly is that no matter how born again this brother is, once he has not arrived, the promises are not there. Pack your load and go. And some of you, that's how you are looking. And God is sending a very godly brother. You are seeing him pray here. He's sweating in your presence. He's hearing the word of God that can change. But because he has not gotten to Canaan, while you are sitting down kicking away men, you will see a quick work that God will do in him. All of a sudden, Saul, who was a slave, or a, 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 a somebody else, will come in power and glory. And you will now look and say, ah... Oh God, why didn't you show me a vision that this guy would change so fast? Say mindset. Say it. Some of you are already angry. It's too early. I've not started preaching. It's too early this night. Could it be that there is a mindset that is frustrating you. There are many pastors who are suffering and struggling in ministry because their mindsets about ministry will never change. I said it last week, they are looking for lifting quickly. They want everybody to call them a pastor. 
You call them Aaron. They say, Aaron, you didn't add pastor. That's a mindset. Because you think that is the title that gives the dignity. He said, if you call yourself the children of Abraham, do the works of Abraham. Prove that you are the children of Abraham indeed. You don't move around saying, I'm an apostle, I'm a prophet, I'm a teacher. He said, let her works speak for her at the gates. Who is God speaking to tonight? Your mindset is limiting him. Your mindset is limiting God. Your mindset is limiting God. Every brother that comes to marry you, something happens and he leaves. We have prayed for you. We knew the day you were delivered. So we are sure you are delivered. But things have not changed. That means there is a mindset problem. Listen, it's not everything that is demons. You must learn to take responsibility. Many of us receive solace in the fact that demons, when you hear them say it's not your fault, you say, yes, I've always known. It's your fault this night. You must take responsibility. I've always known. From my father's house, they want to kill me. But you were delivered. Everybody saw that God changed you. Why have things not changed? Because your mindset is a bigger demon, an antichrist that is standing between Canaan and Egypt. Hallelujah. There are Christians who still cheat in the exam hall. They say, forget it. I saw a pastor doing it with my own eyes. Ah, I even know him. If I mention his name, I saw him. So what? Hallelujah. What about living all kinds of immoral life? In the world, the primary purpose of relationship is for immorality. It's not even for marriage. It's just a, an official way of looking for a partner to be sleeping around with so when a guy thinks he doesn't have enough courage to look around for ladies he goes to find somebody and say okay we're in a relationship they don't even know where they are going hallelujah and there are believers who love god some of you are here you are looking at me you see i'm not condemning you but i'm saying that 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 god must come face to face with the world and when it comes one must bow you cannot embrace these things and say let's go together it can go we can walk it no you cannot walk it light and darkness cannot stay in the same place don't say it does not matter let me tell you the truth if you want to see the authentic glory of god in your life no it matters and i always say this because many of us here are young people don't let anybody fool you and say everybody is doing it. No, sir. There are people who have tapped into a higher law. The Bible says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Until you climb that hill, it does not look like it's possible. Are you getting my point? I counsel people. I talk to people. And there are people who come and say, I love God, but I, women, hey, I, I can't see women. I don't, I, is it really true that there are people who are keeping themselves? It's not by determination. Hallelujah. If it's by determination, maybe I would have had children that, that would do children's service for koinonia. But there is a grace that takes you. So although you are human, people say, I beg, Jare, you are flesh and blood. No, but there is a spirit that lives inside you. The Bible says, know ye not that your body, listen, choose to believe this this night. Don't let it sound childish to you. Choose to believe. If it was not possible, God would be a wicked person for putting that as a principle. Hallelujah. Transformation. There are some of us who can kill for money. That's your own mindset. You overcame ladies from bed. You don't even have a problem with ladies. Because you, you want to make it. Even if a lady stands naked in your front, once there's no money on her, you are living. You are not, the devil can, the devil has been defeated when it comes to that one. But money, ha, ha, ha. You can be dying if they wave money, you come back to life. There are people like that. 
they love money. They can just put money on their table and just be looking at it like this. They are not using it. It's, it's, doing, it's like a drug they are taking. Your worst time in church is when they say giving. Of all sorts, even if they don't mention you, the fact that somebody else is going to drop money, you take it past now. You are not giving, but just seeing that money is leaving somebody, it's, it's paining you, something is moving in your body, advise this guy to take it back. It's a spirit. It's a dangerous spirit. Hallelujah. There are many of us who have certain mindsets of laziness. Laziness. Hallelujah. A man will sleep till one o'clock in the afternoon. You are a man. When do you want to marry? Next year. Till one o'clock you are still sleeping. And you will see one of our sisters who has been trusting God. Preparing herself like a bride. For a very nice person, you just believe that because we say hug one another in koinonia, it gives you a license to just get up carelessly and just go and meet a sister and say, Shebi, they say, let's get to know one another. No. Are you preparing for that future? I'm challenging you tonight. Say transformation. What mindset have you refused to drop down? Romans chapter 12. Can you imagine that I've not even touched my message? Hallelujah. Romans chapter 12. Say the word of the Lord is changing me. Say it is changing me. It's building me. Romans chapter 12. Okay. Let's just turn there. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Be ye, how do you get transformed? By the renewing of your mind. You get transformed when you take your mind to the theater of the spirit and a surgery is performed. The spirit of God himself and the surgical knife is the word of God that is able to cut across the bones and the marrows and it opens you up and begins to edit your life. And when it is done, you come back a brand new person. Hallelujah. There are many of us, those around you, who are unbelievers. There's no pressure that your life is bringing to them. In fact, they are more, they are comfortable. A guy can, I'm not talking of condemnation and just pointing fingers at people and say you are going to hell. No, but that there is an illumination that your transformation can bring to anybody that is not serious with God. That if somebody's prayer life is dying, he doesn't even need to tell you. All he needs to say is, can I come and spend weekend in your house or in your room? And they are so sure that at the end of three days, something will change in their lives. Hallelujah. There are some channels, if you are walking in sin, you will never want to turn to those channels. Perpetually, 24 hours, you will hear a message almost immediately within a space of five minutes that will judge you. Dove TV, redeem. RTM, you know that? Once you are doing something wrong, you want to look for another channel that can accommodate what you are doing. When you turn to those ones, you hear Papa Adebo, just give five minutes. Something is already flogging the nonsense in you. Can your life be like that? That people are gossiping 
and, and talking stories about others. And as soon as you step in, everybody just keeps quiet. Because a true ambassador stepped in. One who will not compromise. Not that when you step in, say, hey, come, add, add to this discussion. What, what were you even saying that day? No. Hallelujah. That in your office, when they are mentioning men and women of integrity, your name must be mentioned. And they know that, no, if you want to throw this person, try it another way. Bribery will not work. Even if it means him being demoted, just forget it. There is no issue of having a meeting with him. It will not happen. Come on now. Listen, if this is not happening in this place, then we are wasting our time. I don't care how many people fall on the ground, roll on the ground, even if you float in the air. If it does not translate to transformation in your life, then we are lying somewhere. Hallelujah. So is your mindset changing? Ask your neighbor. Say, is your mindset changing? What did he tell you? Ask him who can verify that you are changing. You can't call somebody that you bought something for in the afternoon to verify whether you are changing or not. The answer will certainly be yes. Your enemy is the only person with the right to testify whether you truly fear God or not. It was Satan that came to testify about Job. Is that true? Satan himself, he said, ah, no, come on now, I've seen a man. Job, Satan, the father of all liars, a man's integrity compels Satan to tell the truth. He said, I know, I'm a liar. I can twist things, but this one, there's nothing I can say against this man. May that be your testimony. That somebody can look at you and say, I know, I hate Ken. Let me tell you, I hate him. But when you are talking about a man who is a Christian indeed, I'm an, I, I'm an unbeliever. As you see me, I don't fear God. I, let me go to hell, but I can tell you, this person, have you seen people like that? They don't respect God. They look at you and say, see, see cigarette in my pocket. But I can point to you who are the real men of God. And you even be talking. It was in Antioch when unbelievers called this set of people Christians. Those who were behaving like Christ. Not religiously. Something had happened to them. See, if your mindset does not change and you are trying to fake it, it will frustrate you. Are you getting what I'm saying? One day you will be tired. If you don't have a revelation of giving and you are giving, 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 one day when there's nobody, you say, Kai, I'm tired, honestly. Thank God this, my wicked roommate, is not going to follow me for Koinonia today. I'm tired. That's how you can see many people serve in the body of Christ. Immediately they leave to another geographical location within two or three months. They've changed in a way. You'll be like, uh-uh. This brother used to lead prayers. What suddenly happened? They really did not get it. I'm telling you. There is a way you get it. It becomes like a cancer in you. No matter how much you fall, you can't go too far. The, the, the fraternity is too much. It's like a cult. When you see people claim to love God and two months away from an environment of God's presence, they just change. They really did not get it. You can be among believers, I hope you know, doing what everybody is doing. But everybody knows the foundation and the root where he is standing. And the Bible says, let he that stands take heed, lest he falls. So number one, transformation. Number two, three things that must happen in your life. You ready? Number two, is that your life must bear fruits. It must produce results. Write it. Fruits. Results. 
the fruit in a tree is a sign that that tree has been well nourished and that it is alive and growing jesus caused a fig tree not because he did not see green leaves he caused the fig tree because it was taking up nutrients from the earth but it was not producing fruits your life must prove that God is at work in you, not just by transformation. Transformation is good. We talk about character and conformity, but there must be results in your life. Everyone say results. Bishop Oyedeko said the end of every argument is proof. You don't argue with proof. Are you getting my point now? When John the Baptist sent that they should go and ask Jesus, are you the Messiah or should we expect another? Jesus did not even answer. He just turned, started healing the sick, casting out devils. He said, go and tell John what you have seen. Is this not the evidence that was given to him in the wilderness that the Messiah would do? Now see me doing it. Why are you asking again? Hallelujah. When you are a Christian and you are excellent in your job, they give you a task to do. You do it with, with a dimension of intelligence that is not known to those people. There is a proof there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you keep loving God and you get to a point, look, let me tell you, if you serve God with time, everything around your life should change. I'm not one of those people who believes that you should just sit down of course, in the process, there are lots of things to contend against. But with time, there must be fruit that sign upon your life that God is with you. Even if you work for the devil, even if you work for the devil, one day, ultimately he's going to destroy you. But at least in the interim, you will reap the, de the, de the dividends of allegiance. Is that true? There are all kinds of worldly people who are bowed to Dagon. And although they are going to hell if they do not repent, but in the interim, they are enjoying heaven on earth. At least that's the consolation to keep them. Satan took Jesus to a mountain and said, Jesus, if you will bow to me, I promise you, I, uh, I have I've not started preaching, no. That's the problem. You will just look now and see that this past night. I wish there was a way I can throw all these clocks out of this, this place. There's so much in my spirit to share. Hallelujah. Everybody say results. Say proofs. If you claim God is calling you in a healing ministry, it's okay that when we start, nothing is happening. But with time, there should be the signature of God upon your healing ministry. I do not know any healing evangelist who organizes a crusade and God does not confirm it. If he's a true healing evangelist, somebody should be sick. Somebody should arise from the wheelchair. I do not know one true person who carries the apostolic spirit of God, who struggles with fear and timidity and does not have the power of faith and the work of God in their lives. I do not know one person like that, except they are just talking stories. Are you getting what I'm saying? Say after me, in the name of Jesus, may my life produce results. Many of you, this is the level you are right now. The reason why nobody has listened to you or subscribed to your ideologies is because they have not seen the benefit. Is that true? And, 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 I, and I want to be very honest with you. Benefit in every area of life. Financially, maritally, job-wise, in every area of your life. No matter how critical people are, let me tell you, proof can close the mouth of anybody. Are you getting me? You can criticize a man. The greatest way to respond to your critics is not by answering. Don't waste your time. They are determined not to understand. Keep trailing the proofs. Let the works keep speaking at the gates. A point will come, those they are talking to will say, I'm tired of hearing your stories. You waste your own proof. Hallelujah. When Jesus hung upon the cross, 
about to die. The Bible says the atmospheric condition, the climate just changed. And those who looked there, they just remembered and truly they acknowledged. Even in death, they saw something. There are many of us, it will just take one proof. Everybody say one proof. One proof for every unbeliever in your house to bow down. They've grown in poverty. They've suffered in poverty. Although that's not an ultimate reason to push them to God. But trust me, prosperity can bring men to God. Hallelujah. When every herbal medicine has failed, when every blood substance, they, they tied in the leather, and they told your father to chuck in the pocket of all his trousers to bring prosperity. When he has put it in every pocket and it refused to bring prosperity. And you come teaching the principles of the kingdom. And things begin to change. Come on now. You don't argue with proofs. Hallelujah. May your life produce results. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you not be like the barren fig tree. A fig tree with green leaves. That means they are seeing you coming for koinonia. Every week. Every week. To an extent that others can look at you and mock you. And say where is your God? I prophesy to you your God is coming through for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Your God is coming through to silence every Pharaoh that attempts to mock your God. Your life will produce result in the name of Jesus Christ. Results. I believe in results. I believe in results. Many of you are here by the grace of God, not necessarily because you love me of you don't even love me at all you don't plan to it's just that you need the results <laughs> hallelujah but you are still welcome and the power of god is such that the results can be reproduced again and again and again that's why i love the anointing of the holy spirit you don't need to refrigerate it you don't need to give your neighbor to keep it for you and collect it on except you use talisman That's why I worship him. Take his presence and his glory out of my life. Many of you will see me on the street and pass as if you just saw a tire on the floor. That's why I feel sad for people who want to come out of inferiority and complex and kick, they kick God out of the equation and they believe they'll be able to rise without him. Impossible impossible if you are tired of your condition the greatest way is to embrace god first hallelujah because god will take you out of every situation results your life must bear fruit in the name of the lord jesus christ say my life must bear fruit go ahead pray in one minute pray in one minute i don't just want us to talk it as stories, my life must bear fruit. Shekata ba 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 ba. My life must bear fruit. My life must bear fruit. I've been born again for many years. No soul has come to the kingdom as a result of my life. Lord, I'm tired. I've been praying for the sick. I don't have one verifiable testimony. Let this change, oh God. Everyone I've prayed for for breakthrough, they've returned with worse situations instead of making it better. But Lord, I've told them you are with me. Change my story. The finance of my family has not changed. Lord, I'm not loving you just because of finances. But if my finances change, my father will follow me to church if my finances change if my loved ones get admission they will come to know you for their sake oh god let there be results in my life
Zinde preke sita balada bozo to prinde gele balada ba. Mekre to so supriata kashila mania. Rakata preda gede balada bash. Please pray. I sense that God wants us to pray on this issue. Mata prete ke shebele de bo. Sete bakata rakata balada ba. My life must bear fruits. My life must bear fruits. My life must bear fruit, oh God. I'm tired of a barren and unfruitful Christian life. My ministry is not growing. Pray because there's no proof. My God, people come and they leave. If there are real miracles, if there are real transformations, they will come and stay. Everyone mocks my family in spite of our spirituality because they have not seen God change our level. Turn again, oh God, the captivity of Zion like the streams of the Negev. Let men see an evidence that God is with us. Pray. Say, Lord, let the marriage come even if it is to prove that Jesus is alive, to prove that the witches and the wizards and the devils in my village do not have the final say. Lord, I know that there is a cause of poverty that lingers in my family, but I've confessed your word that it is broken. Let it show in my life as a testament so that idol worship can stop in my family. We have no right to tell men to stop going to harvest if we cannot produce the proofs that God is with us. We have no right to tell people to stop going to the devil to get children if we cannot heal the body. We have no right to tell people to stop going to the devil to get money if we cannot prove that God prospers people. Lift your voice and pray. Get angry. Change my story. Change my story. Oh God, I have served you in spite of the result but tonight i hold on to you change my story pray koinonia there is a spirit of intercession that has come upon the house pray change my story change my story change my story prove a point with my life make me an object of prayer Silence the voice of wicked men. Many a day that rise up against me. Many a day that say, where is his help? But I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the maker of the heavens and the earth. Oh God, let there be a difference between those that serve you and those that do not serve you come on saints of god travel for your destiny there must be an evidence you have been transformed but there are no results there are no results men have a right to speak against your god lord hasten my miracle come on pray hasten my miracle hasten the breakthrough please pray God is answering people in this place. Lord, give my father the job. Although my auntie is past menopause, give her a child as a sign and a wonder that God is alive. Although my sister is 40 years old, give her a husband that men may know that God is alive. Although my father was sacked from the job. Give him another one, oh God, to prove that you made me a prophet over my family. Lord, you have vowed to increase my greatness. Produce results in my life. Come on, Koinonia, pray. Produce results in my life that can silence men, produce results that can prove that my God is alive. 
I love him more than the results. But in this season, I desire to see the result. Command it. Command it. Increase my greatness. Let the blind see through my hands, oh God. For your glory. Pray. Let the wheelchair arise to silence principalities and powers. Open the heavens, oh God, and let prosperity come upon my life where I'll be rejected. No man wants to identify with me. Make me an eternal excellency. Come on, are you praying, Koinonia? And a joy of many generations. Hallelujah. 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 We'll take one prayer point before we settle down. You're going to pray and say, Lord, every power that stops my miracles from the heavenlies so that men will keep mocking my God. Tonight, I command you to give way. Come on, lift your voice and pray. Daniel prayed for 21 days. The angel came and said, Daniel, from the first day that you set yourself to pray, your prayers were answered. But the prince of Persia, the prince of Persia, the prince of Persia, pray, I subdue powers. I subdue powers that operate in the heavenlies, territorial spirits. I subdue powers in the heavenly realms. I subdue powers, workers of evil. You must bow. There is fire in my life. There is fire in my destiny to burn every chaff, everything God has not planted. Shake it off, shake it off, shake it from your life. I shake away witchcraft, I shake away divination, I shake away enchantment. Come on now, shake it off in the name of Jesus. No power can stand. I am an infant of fire, no enchantment. No curse can stand against my destiny. Pray. Your prayer will bear fruits. It will produce results. Pray. The effectual, fervent prayer. is our season of greatness. We wait war against poverty. We went war against sickness. We went war against the works of darkness. It's a season to arise. Come on now, pray. Make your life too hot for the devil. Make your life too hot for witches and wizards. Make your life too hot for wicked spirits. Break the yoke from your neck. Break the yoke from your shoulders. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Tell the devil I stand in my priestly and my prophetic office tonight I confront you by myself I confront you by myself I confront you by myself hallelujah listen 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 there must come a time in your life where you stop getting afraid and rise up and say satan i've had the word enough i don't need to wait for friday again come into my room like mount camel let's solve this problem once and for all 
They've not laid hands on me for nothing. They've not laid hands on me for nothing. One more time, we are going to pray. Come on, pray. This is breakthrough prayers. This is breakthrough prayers. I sense the spirit of prayer and supplication. I must break through on every side. There is power in prayer. There is power when you say to pray. There is power when you pray. Make contact with the spirit. There is power. Pray. Enough is enough. Where is the devil? Where is the devil? By the power of the prophetic prayer, resist the devil. He will flee. Hallelujah. I feel an open heaven. I know when there is an open heaven. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. I taught you on the speaking blood. We are going to apply the blood of Jesus. You are going to say, Satan, this is the price to release my destiny. I invoke the blood. Come on now, Koinonia. I invoke the blood. Every sacrifice that has been born and made, I invoke the blood. The blood of Jesus. I invoke the blood. I challenge the gates of hell through the blood. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The Christ. Listen, come, let me have four people. Let me show you what prayer does in the spirit. Let me just have four people stand here. Just, just turn like this, facing, stand. Just stand behind, watch this. Watch this. Someone come and hold this. Anybody? This is your miracle. This is your breakthrough, but watch this. Stand there. Please shift forward. Paul said, listen. He said, a great door and an effectual has been opened unto me. He said, but many, many, many are the adversities. These are the spirits. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, 
against rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places watch this the bible says if any man afflicted let him pray if any man afflicted let him pray when you begin to pray watch this there is a force there is a force of the spirit that begins to mount pressure, pressure, pressure on all of these things. It's an ability of the spirit. You push through barriers by the power of God's spirit until you take what belongs to you. Listen, listen. That's why God gives you one of the reasons why he gives you the prayer language of tongues. Praying in your understanding will weary you after 20 minutes the bible says you may not understand the dynamics on how to confront this spirit but when you switch to that prayer language the holy ghost hey yeah, 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 yeah. the holy ghost listen when you begin to pray something in the come on pray. Pray. When your prayer life rises, the devil must let you go. If you can pray, he will not let you go. If you can pray, he will not let you go. Hallelujah. See, listen. There is a way you can pray. You will know when you pray through. The reason is, the truth is, many believers don't pray. Hallelujah. There is a way you can pray. You will know your spirit is lifted from that realm. You will know an audacity comes upon you. You know you can shake off evil. Oh. Hallelujah. One more prayer point. Before you sit down, you're going to say in the name of Jesus, I take back everything the devil has taken from my family. Prophesy. Shita. Wapata keteria. Wapata keteria. Wapata Let's go. 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 Let's go.
The hand of the Lord is upon me and I want to prophesy. As I prophesy, the power of God will be causing breakthroughs and restoration. The anointing of the Spirit is strong upon me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command every power holding anyone down right now in the name of jesus i command you let them go let them go right now let them go i prophesy breakthrough i command breakthrough in the name of the lord jesus i command breakthrough to your family breakthrough financial breakthrough Academic, breakthrough in your job, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Open heaven. Open heaven. Amen. It's your season to rise. It's your season of greatness. Every power stopping you, we challenge it tonight. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Please sit down. God bless you. Be seated. Your life must become uncomfortable for anything that is not of God. See, I tell you, the power of God is, I sense such a strong anointing resting on people. As I teach, God is going to be visiting people in very strong ways. Enough is enough. God gave us a word. He said, I will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side. I'm not sure I can go into the details of tonight's teaching, but... I hope I'll be able to touch. I really have a very serious revelation that I want to share. Let's see how far God can help us wherever we stop. Hallelujah. Genesis 1, verse 26. The Lord gave us a word that this year for us is a season of light and dominion. It's not just a word like many ministries have a word at the beginning of the year. Hallelujah. Light. It's a day that certain Nepta and Zebulun have seen a great light. A great light. Genesis 1 verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion let them this man i hope you know that when he was speaking the woman was still in the man because man adam not the name of a man dust hallelujah man was first created body has thou prepared for me hallelujah and then he brought about a separation between the man and the woman. But before then, he blessed them. And he said, let them have dominion. Now listen. It is in the character of the spirit that the same word 
that brings you prophecy is the same word that prepares the way for that prophecy to come to pass. Are you getting my point? The Bible says, when at the brook Cherith, when the brook dried, he told Elijah the prophet, he said, get thee, go down to Zarephath. He said, dear, I have commanded a widow to feed thee. But the woman did not sound like God had informed her a prophet was coming. However, the same word that took Elijah to Zarephath was the same word that softened the heart of the woman. So when God gives you a word, the word follows you through and makes sure that the path is clear until that word comes to pass. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when God said, let man have dominion, that means there must have been a provision for that man to access what it takes to walk in that dominion. Hallelujah. God does not just speak empty talk. It's like sending a man to the market and not giving him money. So let's see how God equipped man to exercise dominion in reality. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2. I wish we had time, but I'll just touch briefly wherever... Thank you, Jesus. Verse 8. And the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man that he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord to grow every tree that is pleasant in the sight and good for food. Now watch this. Everybody look up. The Bible says God made every other tree to grow from the ground. Are you following me? However, the Bible says there were two trees. Those trees did not grow from the ground. Follow me. Are you getting my point? The Bible says God made to grow every tree pleasant to the eyes. That is good for food. Then it says the tree of life also, also in the midst of the garden. And then he says, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Please follow me. I want to teach you powerful spiritual laws that can help you to walk in dominion. To eat of every tree, including the tree of life. Are you getting my point? The first revelation I want you to have is that man's eating the tree of life was not for hunger. Are you getting me? Adam could not be hungry. He was not in the fallen state. Are you getting me? In the realm of the spirit, you don't eat for, hung for hunger. You eat for impartation and knowledge. That's what food does in the spirit. Food does not satisfy hunger. No, no. When you eat food, like let's say in spiritually, now I'm not talking of all these demonic things that people, you saw yourself eating sweet in the dream. That's not what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. You don't eat in the spirit to satisfy hunger. Food does two things for you in Eden's atmosphere. One, it gives you knowledge. Two, it gives you impartation. Hallelujah. That's why the prophet was giving the word and he ate it. When he ate it, it did something to him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now watch this. Everybody write the mystery of forbidden knowledge. That's not the topic. I want to show you what the two trees were supposed to represent. One was the tree of life. The other was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Another word was the, it, it carried what we call the mystery of forbidden knowledge. The word mystery just means hidden truths about a knowledge that God does not want his people to know. Not because he hates them. You must understand this. God does not want us to know everything. And then I will show you what the angels came and did. The fallen angels, when they came, they did something to the daughters of men. Are you getting me? They took from this forbidden knowledge 
and they began to feed mankind with it. Ah. Time, 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 time. Praise God. God categorically warned man. He said, the trees in the garden of Eden, every time you eat them, they will do something to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, if you eat of the tree of life, it will keep giving you the revelation and the insight to walk in dominion. It gives life. Eating of that tree gives life. Are you getting me? That's the mystery of eternal life, adumbrated by that tree. That's why when Jesus came, he said, uh -uh, man shall not live by bread alone. If man wants to live, he must keep eating something. Are you getting me? So, walking experientially for eternal life to be culminated in you, there is something that must be done in you. Please listen. And this is where I want to balance. This is what, where we get the concept of immortality. How many of you have heard all those teachings of immortality? Now, unfortunately, many people brought the teachings, but they did not understand how the operation. Immortality is not something you claim. Immortality is a product of eating of the tree of life again and again. It causes eternal life, not just to translate from your spirit to your soul, but to happen in your body. And that's where you say, oh, death, where is your sting? Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, it so happens that our rate of transformation is so slow. Are you getting me now? That the degradation of the sin nature in our body catches up with us before these capsules of rejuvenation find expression in us. This is why, although the law of immortality is at work, not many people will ever enter it. The secret is not just prayer for long life. The secret is intercoursing with this eternal life. That was how Adam was supposed to live forever. Are you getting my point now? So by eating of the tree of life, that was why when he fell, God said, no, you can't eat of the tree of life again because the tree of life keeps you in whatever state you are and stops you from dying. If he ate of the tree of life, salvation redemption would not be possible again so god drove him out are you seeing that now god didn't just drive him because he was angry he drove man out of the garden because he loved him praise the lord what is this i want to explain to you what is this mystery of forbidden knowledge look up how many of you have heard of certain books called the books of moses right 10 books of Moses, 11 books of Moses. How many of you have heard of all these extra biblical references that were written by Egyptians and written by all kinds of people? Have you heard of those kinds of things? How many of you have heard of people that lived long ago in mountains who wrote certain books that were found? Now listen, if I don't teach you this because the Lord began to reveal to me that this is the strategy the devil is bringing when the angels do you know why god did not want man to know i hope you know that adam never knew adam never knew that before his coming there was a history hallelujah he had never eaten of the tree that gives the knowledge of good and with it comes evil are you getting me adam was supposed to eat of the tree of life and continue his intimacy with god and reproduce children after his kind when Satan came into the garden, Satan did not make Adam sleep with a dog. No, he knew that that would not get the agenda done. He said, man, come. There is one tree I want you to touch. Just taste it once. It will do something to you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Everybody say forbidden knowledge. This is the information that through sorcery and witchcraft, please hear me, the fallen angels and all of these aliens and all of these devilish spirits, they downloaded and brought to inhabitants in the earth. Are you getting me? These were the informations that were given men like Nimrod. So they had super.
by intelligence about certain things. Are you following me? I want to shock you. I hope you will believe me. Look at me. Did you know that most of our technological advancements, are you getting me, are as a result of fraternity with beings that were not in the earth? Are you getting me? It had to be a supply of a level. It's not just human discipline. Don't mind what all those books tell you. Just be hardworking and think well. No, sir. Those people had interactions with beings. Is that how did Solomon become extremely rich and blessed? What happened to him? God visited him from another realm. Is that not true? They had a conversation. Listen, this conversation is still happening in the earth till today. Are you following me? Let me share with you something very briefly. I hope you believe me. The Bible says Jesus was giving the parable of the wheat and the tear. Is that true? He said, while men, everybody, while men, hold on. He says, while men slept, something happened in the earth realm where men were sleeping. Now, the sleeping is not bad. We always use that sleep to mean while men were backsliding. No, he meant literal sleep. That means there is something that cannot happen when men are awake. Are you getting me? Jesus was telling us something powerful. He says the moment men sleep, some beings can walk into the earth. And he said the enemy quickly comes, plants something and goes his way. So you wake up with a growth that was not there before you slept. I, is somebody following me? What happened? Who came and put it there? while men slept are you seeing why the bible says the keeper of israel neither nor it says every time men sleep something happens in this earth realm there are certain beings that come into the earth realm that's why people sleep in the night and in their dream realms they have all kinds of encounters with beings and animals and all kinds of things happen from intercourse to eating to every kind of thing and they wake up the next day only for them to fail at work or fail in exams something happened while men the psalmist saw this in psalm 91 and he says thou shall not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day right not the noisome pestilence but many believers are dull of understanding dominion dominion is not just a function of i claim it there is spiritual intelligence that can bring you into that position where you walk in dominion are you hearing what i'm saying please are you getting something so this tree of the knowledge of good and evil was never supposed to be consumed by man are you getting me look, look at me when you open that book you will find good but you will not know when evil is planted in the good are you getting what i'm saying that's why a pastor can go and read the 12 book of moses or go and read Scientology and be looking at it and saying, wow, so candles or certain things can do something to witches and wizards. Everybody say forbidden knowledge. Are you getting that now? And then they read certain zodiac books and they look and they say, why not I add this knowledge to what I already have? Are you getting what I'm saying? And they will seem to walk powerfully that is the forbidden knowledge the tree of the knowledge of good and evil sometimes we celebrate it what do we call it rema is that true and we bring all kinds of things i've heard about men of god and prophets and all kinds of people who do every kind of nonsense in the body of christ 
all kinds of magic happening everywhere. I once heard of a man of God who came for a program and he was preaching and he called somebody. He said, look at me. The person who looked at him became blind at once. Yes, completely blind at once. Members were clapping. People were running to come and drop seed. I don't know what they were tapping into, but they were running and everybody was happy. Watch this. And then after the guy preached, 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 he did everything and then he prayed again and the guy was open. And he said, for that reason, everything that is closed in everybody's life, you know, I, I open it and you see everybody just shouting amen. Listen. Let me tell you. Listen. Listen. Will people get results? They will get tremendous results. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because the laws that have been operated are valid spiritual laws. But this is the point. Because it was not initiated and sponsored by the Spirit of God. Although it is correct knowledge, it is called witchcraft. So it's not about what produces result. It's about the Spirit of God initiating and sustaining that process. Hallelujah. There are many teachings coming to the body of Christ. Men and women of God who went to lock themselves to pray for three days and seven days or whatever. And in the midst of this prayer, because many people did not exalt the word above prophecy, they had visitations, but they were not of God. However, they were not visitations of inhabitants of the earth. And they came and committed to them power and gave them all kinds of things. And they came out from all of those experiences. And you see power. You see anointing. But it is not initiated and sponsored by the Spirit. And the sign is number one. The glory never goes to God. Such kinds of people never give God the glory. Because it is part of the agreement. Are you following me now? It is God's desire that we grow. The Bible even said knowledge shall increase. But you must guard. When the table is set before you, you are only permitted to eat of the tree of life. There is a kind of knowledge that only puffs up. Have you seen people? Hold on. I want to say a few things that will challenge you. Have you seen a lot of people? Please, I don't mean this for criticism or anything. Have you seen a lot of people who got mad as a result of prayer? Have you, have you seen those kinds of things? That somebody got to pray and he started praying until they took him to the psychiatry and locked him. I remember a lady years ago. This lady was praying in tongues seemingly for about almost 48 hours. I was there. ABU secure. This girl was just praying, praying, praying. She wouldn't listen to anybody. I wish I knew what I know now. And the thing confuses the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Everybody say forbidden knowledge. Men of God, if you are in ministry here, you have to be very careful. That, that insatiable lust for rema and revelation, you must guard carefully. And let this, that's why walking in the spirit is the secret. It gives you life. When you walk in the flesh, you may learn a lot of principles that although they are powerful, it leads men to death. So the more revelation a man is getting, the more he's dying. Not to self, dying as a result of the absence of light. See, this is how you know is one character to know that a man is not of God. When you compare the rate of revelation versus the rate of transformation, when there is so much word, conferences happening, conventions happening, meetings happening, rema upon rema, Bible study, all kinds of things, yet you do not see that that word is chaff. It lacks the life to build people. There is error. I hope somebody is learning something here. 
God put two trees. And all the trees can supply knowledge. For one, it is the knowledge that brings life. There are certain teachings on deliverance that does not bring life. Is that true? There are certain teachings on deliverance that brings people into bondage. Because people added Bible knowledge plus confessions that they got from people who were once witches and wizards. Is that true? And they added everything. And they say, if you want the devil to run away from you, once it's nine o'clock, wear red. That, that one is not in the Bible. You see that? That is, that is deception dimension there. I, I, is somebody following what I'm saying? I apologize if maybe these are the tenants of your church or your ministry. I really apologize. I love the body of Christ, but I have to teach you the truth. So there is the biblical concept of deliverance, for instance. Then there are others who have spent their entire life interviewing seemingly witches and wizards begging for audience with herbalists to explain to them the realm of the spirit knowing that satan is the father of all liars are you getting my point now and it is on the strength of those information they have built their prayer ministries or built a lot of things so when you want to pray for somebody you look and say uh -uh, i can't pray for you like this you are wearing a black shoe change it into a special kind of slippers that you wear when you enter my my this thing for the power to work this one is astrology and witchcraft is somebody getting what i'm saying or you get all kinds of candles with different colors this flame that flame this flame and you say now come and sit in the midst of it and just be calm as I drive this spirit. Uh-uh. This is called transcendental meditation. This is witchcraft. Hallelujah. Yet, you come and sit down in the midst of that candle. Something suddenly happens to you. And you start taking first in the class. All of a sudden, your intelligence is heightened. You think beyond your level. And because you're... Are you following my story, please? Because you are getting results, you will be encouraged. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Be careful. Because many people are eating of the forbidden tree. They are eating right now, today, here and now. They are getting access to knowledge that seems to be producing results. Thank you. But that knowledge is not of God. Maybe some of us right here as you are sitting down are already in these deceptions. The moment you read those books, although they are blowing your mind, but something in your spirit starts checking. The Holy Ghost is telling you, uh-uh, when did you get into this? When did you get into this? And you see, these books are in our libraries. You can get them online. Many of you have watched every kind of thing. You see a man who has supernatural ability to listen to plants and animals and you sit down there are all kinds of books people research online how to hear the language of plants and animals and they put all kinds of codes they say recite it by 12 or 1 many christians you get up carry your big head and stand in front of the mirror and now recite it the last you recite it and just wake up and see that it's morning you slept something happened to you you may not know what happened again. Anytime God wants to take in and bring out of a man, sleep happens. And God calls Adam to sleep. Hallelujah. Are you understanding this? We're talking about dominion through, through spiritual intelligence. The knowledge that leads to death. I'm going to share with you very importantly very quickly two laws even if it's just in five minutes wherever we stop that's it for the night two important spiritual laws that can help us i'm committed to making sure that god grants us spiritual intelligence 
that we have knowledge. This is what makes you strong in the spirit. Prayer is good, but it's not just enough to pray. You must have knowledge so that when you see things, you know what laws are in place and you know what to do about them. Knowledge takes away ignorance. Knowledge takes away shock from your life so that you are not surprised about anything. When you hear that something has happened, you don't just panic, you understand. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Law number one is called the law of territory. If you want to walk in dominion, you must understand this law. The law of territory. Everybody say the law of territory. Look up, please. Dominion is territorial. Dominion is territorial. Even in the satanic organogram, they understand the jurisdiction and the boundaries of territories. There are spirits and principalities that do not operate in the earth realm. It's not their territory of work. Are you getting me? Every time they are on the earth realm, they are powerless. There are certain demonic operations that are territorial. I'll give you an instance. When you go to certain territories in this Nigeria, you see that there are certain traits and satanic operations given to that territory. When you go outside of the territory, it doesn't seem to have a hold on you again. Is that true? And you go into another territory, maybe it's drunkenness that is there. You go to another territory, maybe it's lust and immorality. The operations of the kingdom and the operations of the spirit are territorial. Every man, every kingdom citizen must know this. Abraham, come out of your father's house. Come out of this territory where you are into a land that I will show you. And if you do get to that land, then I will bless you and you will be a blessing. I will bless them that bless you and curse him that curses you. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. But that will only happen if you leave one territory to another. Everybody say dominion is territorial. It's a spiritual intelligence that you must understand. Number two is that you must understand very, very clearly that in the place of your assignment, that is where you will exercise true dominion. Everything opens up for you at your assigned territory. There is an assigned territory where the spirit of dominion can walk in your life. Hallelujah. This is what a lot of people do not understand. Please look up. You must take out time to hear from God. Are you getting me? As to where he wants you to be at every season. Not just what you want him to do for you. But where your blessings are territorial. And Isaac sowed in that land. Genesis 26 from verse 12. And Isaac sowed not just in any land. Although there was famine. God told him this is your territory of dominion. Sow in that land. A man of God may go to Zamfara. And sit down and say Zamfara is not a lucrative place. Let me run to Abuja for ministry. And he goes outside of territory. Are you getting my point? And you see a man struggling in a land of plenty. He's struggling. Yet, you will see another man in the same Zamfara. Blessings coming from people. Those who are born again and those who are not born again. Because you are in the place of your territory. Say the law of territory. Many of us right now are at the face of our lives where we are trusting to know where God wants us to settle for every season. It can change, but that in every season, there is a territory. You miss your territory, you will never walk in dominion. 
Because where God has assigned you, he has commanded the ravens to feed you. He has commanded the widow to attend to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'll never forget when we finished the crusade in Joss. And the PFN people called me in the particular local government in Joss. And they said, would you come and establish a branch of your ministry? We'll give you an auditorium free and we'll give a few pastors to train. I was happy I went to God. God said you would die. I told the PFN people, God said I would die. I'm really sorry. I can't go. As simple as that. Many of you would have said, ah, breakthrough. God has buttered my bread. And you will go there. That's why you can see a ministry flourishing in a, in a particular place. And then they move to a place. And it's as though God did not call them again. Favor is a sign that you are in the right place. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything? When I sent thee, lackest thou anything? By the grace of God at this level of ministry, I can tell you, I am sure that we are in the place assigned. That's why it doesn't matter what venue we use. Whether it is Blue Roof, whether it is Charity and Faith, whether it's whatever. There seems to be grace backing us. So many people have called me. One lady said, them and their family members, they are praying that I must come to Abuja. They say, relocate. Your level is bigger than Zaria. I said, I appreciate you. But I remember there was a man called Ahitophel in scripture. Don't let people advise you out of your destiny. They may be genuine. They look at you and say, Kai, Zaria, it's, it's too much for your level. You say, it's true. Just that, what will we do? And you start thinking and pack your load out of your destiny into a land where there is no assigned space for you. You get into the land and there is no divine assignment for you. There's no space for you. You keep fighting and struggling with everybody. Moses said, if your presence will not go with us, let us remain in this territory where we are sure that your presence is with us. This may be the answer to some of the tragedy of many of our parents. They got up because of looking for greener pastures. They just packed their load and said, Lagos, here we come. Ten years now, they are still suffering. Every door shuts at your face. It's a sign to go back for retreat and say, Lord, speak to me. Speak to me. Where am I missing it? Don't just let jobs and all of these things decide your destiny i know this looks like a, a stupid statement and many people will criticize me for it they'll say are you joking in nigeria where there's no job but you must be careful you exercise dominion in the place of your territory your territory does not just mean the geography alone it means your jurisdiction of operation are you getting me if i go and enter the prophetic ministry right now as an office i'm not a prophet as an office i may operate in prophetic dimensions but god did not call me as a prophet in, in officially like your office your jurisdiction if i now say i'm going to come in and make sure i prophesy for everybody one by one i give you two weeks many of you will start praying and fasting for me because you will start having all kinds of dreams of me missing it you say oh god what is happening this guy is missing this thing there are many men of God who were called to be teachers or pastors, but they, they got outside of territory. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are other people who were called into prayer ministries. Their anointing is the anointing for intercession, but they've now begun to teach wealth seminars and teaching all kinds of prosperity conventions. That's not wrong, except that you have come out of territory. Everybody say territory. You will only walk in your dominion if you confine yourself and limit yourself to your territory, your jurisdiction of operation. There are certain dimensions of ministry. If God instructs me to engage in, I will find graces that are called at the heart of that area and bring them. It doesn't matter whether I can preach more than them. It doesn't matter whether I have more miracles than them. Uh -uh. It's about the grace and the dominion. When a man is in his area of territory, you will exercise dominion freely. You see why a lot of pastors are struggling. 
you go to a church and copy what a man of God is doing. You do not know his, his ministerial packaging. Are you getting my point? So many people who are pastors trying to do the work of apostles, little persecution comes and they are crying. They cannot move forward because see, when God calls a man, he equips you according to the office. When you learn this law, you will walk in dominion. Absolute dominion. There are things I have no business doing. If God gives me an instruction, he will have to give me a special grace for it or direct me to the people who will administer that level of building to the body of Christ. Watch my knee calls it the limitation of the body. People struggle because they do not understand their jurisdiction of operation. Is someone getting blessed tonight? Your assigned territory. God has honored you in the area of catering. When it comes to catering, you walk in dominion here. The next thing you got up and you just heard that people are doing um, building materials and you just get up and go there. You say, I'm supplying building materials. Your first supply, there was trouble. Second supply, 10 years down the line, you are still struggling. Everybody say territory. Thank you, Jesus. The second law. And then we will pray. This one is very important. It is a law that you must believe in and walk in it. It's called the law of exchange. This is a powerful spiritual law if you must walk in dominion. Giving something you love for something you desire is called the law of exchange. The law of exchange. You laid aside your majesty, gave up everything for me. Suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now today you reign in heaven and now exalted. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You are my heart and I am yours forever and ever. I will love you. You are the only one who died for me. You gave your life to set me free. And so I lift my voice to you in adoration. Listen, how many of you have heard that a man gave up his ability to give birth to children for money? Have you heard of that? Everybody say the law of exchange. When you understand this law, you will know the reason why evil seems to happen in a place unhindered. When the Bible says an eye for an eye, have you heard that? Tooth for tooth. I've studied it. It's not like when I break your teeth, you will break back my own to revenge. Are you getting me? It's called compensation. That means if I do something to you, you must take back something that can appease you to the equivalence of the offense. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's called the law of exchange. That's where we get paid by butter. I give you a cow. You must find something that is commensurate to the worth of that cow. Are you getting me? That's why when man fell, based on the justice of God, God looked around to see what can be given. He said, if I give Gabriel, it's not enough. If I give Michael, it's not enough. Do you know why? Because angels themselves are imperfect. I hope you know it. Angels excel in light. They excel in strength. But they are still imperfect. Do you want me to show you? Job. Let's look at it. One scripture. You are the one who said I should show you. Turn to the book of Job. Sorry about the time. We'll round up now. 
He could not give the angels because they are imperfect. Job 4. Please project it. Job 4, verse 18 and 19. I want us to read it together. Job 4. Can we hurry up? Our time is... Job 4. Everyone read. Want to read. He charges angels with what? Verse 19. He said even his servants, he didn't trust them. And even the angels, he charged them with foolishness. How much more a man that wants God to use him without being trained? So God could not give Gabriel and Michael and all of these people. And so he looked at the perfect one, the sinless one, and said, you are the only one that can go as an exchange for what I desire. Please listen to me. The same principle Satan wanted to use for Jesus Christ. He took Jesus to the mountain and he said, bow to me. In other words, let me give you wealth and exchange it with your loyalty for me. Are you getting my point? Just bow to me. Since you are the expression of the Godhead, bow to me so that the Father will see you bowing to me and I can give you wealth. So when a man goes to meet a herbalist, he tells him, what are you going to give me in exchange? Please listen. I will tell you, this is the reason why many territories are powerful. This is why some of the terrorisms you see in Nigeria are powerful. They always give something in exchange for the authority to invade a territory. That's why they do it military might irrespective. Are you getting my point? When you come to God and say, Lord, I want you to use me. God says, what is the exchange for it? And you say, Lord, take my life. Have you had that scripture that says, what shall it profit a man if he does what? And what? Loses his soul. That means, he said, Satan, let's do business. And Satan said, of course, I'm a good businessman. I will give you my soul. Give me the world. So that anywhere I do business, whether in Italy, whether in Dubai, let it work. So that I must be the governor of this state or I must be this, take my soul. So that I will be the reigning musician and nobody can stop me. And he says, all right, let's have the deal. And he says, take my soul. They have received the mark of the beast. That's the 666 there. It's not something that will be put on their hand. They have given their soul. They have received the mark. Are you getting my point? So Satan comes to you. What do you want to give in exchange? Please listen. Something must be given in exchange. If you must walk in true dominion. Everybody knows this. It's not a herbal strategy. It's a spiritual strategy. I'm walking in the anointing. I'm walking in by the grace of God. Because I received this of grace. But something went for it. My life, my will, my ambitions, my desires, they were laid down. That's why I wrote that song. Take all of me, all of me. You have my everything. That's my deal with God. You have my everything. Are you getting me? So my entire life will give him glory. The day I compromise on my own part of the deal, his mercy will show up. But if I walk in rebellion, I have broken the deal. That's the reason why a man can give an exchange. He will say, I will give you my firstborn. Only give me this political position. When the firstborn is now born, the people come and say, oh yeah, oh, we gave you the power. We gave you the wife. Where is our firstborn? And you say, sorry, I didn't realize that children are this nice. I've changed my mind. They say you've changed your mind, we will see. 
all of a sudden the child starts getting sick they must collect their child except the power of god intervenes this is the reason why many families are suffering people covenanted families in exchange for money kings covenanted their territories are you hearing what i'm saying they gave it in exchange for protection they gave it there are families that gave in exchange their fertility so no children can happen in that family there are families that traded boys they said there shall be no men take give us might what men would have done let the women in our family do but take all the men and you find out that no matter how people try they will never give birth to men they give birth to men they will die no matter what happens you just hear that he was taking fresh air outside a bike came and carried him are you hearing what i'm saying exchange see these laws are not old testament laws they are spiritual laws they are still working today here and now are you hearing what i'm saying this is the law that terrorists use before they ever carry an assignment they must take out time are you seeing the reason why every time they shed blood people become richer think about it the moment blood is shed somebody makes money exchange 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 are you seeing the reason why the sacrifice of solomon touched the lord he offered a thousand bond offerings it was an expression of his heart god could not stop he came down many of us may never walk in dominion because you are not ready to exchange your life for his life you are not ready to exchange your strength for his strength but tonight how many people are ready to say lord take everything if this is the price for your grace and your glory don't let anybody fool you and say there's no price you go to a herbalist and see if he will just give you power like that look at me there are men who sacrifice their wives for wealth true or false some christians right there are pastors who sacrifice their children for church growth there are pastors who sacrifice their members for expansion I've said it again and again nothing just happens the day Jesus will come we have a long world film to watch that's when we will know that most of the things we call coincidences were not coincidences hallelujah listen let me tell you something I will never forget one time I was praying in the night years ago and I prayed and I was dedicating my body unto God I stripped myself the way my mother gave birth to me and I lay down on the floor I said Lord let this body become a superconductor of your anointing if there is anything you can do to this mortal body let it carry your power this body cannot be used for sin and hell it, it, I dedicate it unto you and God said this is what you are giving me I will put my glory upon your life and somebody just comes and says, God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And the, Lord, the demons are just looking and saying, look at all these ignorant people. These are the negotiations that many scientists did with aliens. Are you getting me? Many intelligent people. They said, give us, give us technology. Give us the wisdom you used and gave the pharaohs of old. Give us and let us do supernatural things in exchange. We will give you the souls of men. We will give you mankind. We will give you a lot of things. And it's happening here in the earth. That's why you can see a man sitting down. All of a sudden, within two weeks, this man becomes a mysterious millionaire. Either God has done something to him or the devil has done something. There was an exchange somewhere. The Bible says, listen before you ever receive anything you must believe in god and also believe in the vessel that he's using when you hear that somebody has a particular kind of sickness especially a communicable one please help if it's under the anointing this time are we together now listen brothers and sisters these are not ordinary hands you see watch this you you i know you are looking at a physical body 
But this is only an expression. You never say, I am eyes. You say, I have an eye. Who? The you. Your spirit possesses a quality. You don't see with your eyes. You see through it. Right? The Bible says the first Adam. Listen. Listen. The first Adam was a living soul. He said the second Adam has been made a life-giving spirit. In other words, the first Adam could not transfer his contents to another, although he was enjoying it. But now the second Adam is not just a spirit, a life-giving one, a dispenser. You can dispense your spiritual reality to someone else. You can literally, like lighting a candle, fetch from the abundance of the investment of the spirit upon your spirit and release it upon a people that means just like if we if we announce that this guy has lassa fever many of you are going to get up and say ah, lassa fever he, the lassa fever may not ask you whether you have the ability to believe it just by making contact whether it is through air it is through water are we together but what of the anointing of the spirit is it so bound that it cannot reach you? Is it so bound that it cannot touch you? What of the life of God? What of the wisdom of God? I want you to expect, if you have this revelation, then the man of God does not need to come close to you. That you are sitting, there are virtues of wisdom. There are virtues of power. There are virtues of grace. There are impartations, all kinds of things happening. If you sit under the atmosphere, conscious of it, you will receive it. But if you sit down wondering and say, wow, great things are happening. It doesn't happen that way. There is no man of God that is ordinary. There is no true man of God that God has anointed. You may just look at this as ordinary hands. Biology tells you these are just ordinary hands. But it's more than this. There is a mystery surrounding it. You hear the words that I speak. The same way you cannot see the sound. But you cannot deny its effect. You are hearing it. Are we together? I'm not just speaking from my vocal cords. I'm speaking from my spirit, man. So together with that sound, it, there is an anointing that is living and entering into you. When it's time to pray, some of you will stand up and find out all of a sudden I've been healed. My goodness, where is this growth? It has disappeared. If a man's leg starts swelling, we never ask where the body found the added flesh to make it swell. But when it shrinks, we say, where did the flesh go to? Are we together? If someone like me now has my leg two times the size, nobody will say, but where did the body get the extra flesh to add to it? But if it disappears and comes back, people say, ah, ah, where did it go to? Condition your mind to believe God. Condition your mind to believe God is able. Are we together now? Yes, sir. And you see, let me encourage pastors especially. When you come here, don't just watch and be happy. I'd like you to not just look, but see. Because in seeing, there are things you receive. Don't sit down carelessly and just say, wow, this guy is anointed. No, that's not the goal. The goal is that, is, and it's not just to inspire you. It's not inspiration. There is an impartation, a transference of spiritual quality. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You've got to be tired. You've got to insist that God will step in. There are impossible situations in this place and I admit that some of them are humanly impossible. There is no way. But don't, don't play with God. Once you bring God into the equation, step back. You'll be foolish to bring God and still be wondering, will he do? The Bible says they limited God in the wilderness by saying, can God make a table in the wilderness? Oh, yes, he can. Hallelujah. Are you ready for what God will do in your life tonight? Are you ready to insist that the word of God must find expression? Please, let me tell you, if you don't believe in what we are saying, don't waste your time. Just go home. So that you don't sit down in this cold and waste your time. And after koinonia, they ask you, what did you receive? You just smile and say, Kai, ayafi babu. No, no. Because you see, there are people, some of you coming here alone 
has attracted a lot of mockery. They say, why come and sit down under a man of God? Can't you pray in your room and God will hear you? Is it not the same God we are worshipping? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing can be farther from the truth. That it looks spiritual, but it's an error. Are we together? The next time anybody tells you that, tell them human beings have prophetic implications. Human beings have prophetic implications. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Say, Lord Jesus. Lift my faith tonight. I have faith in you. I've tried medications. I've tried human connections. I've tried everything I know to do, but I come before you. The God of all flesh. The one who can change my situation. Lift your voice and make sure you are praying. Give me a visitation tonight, oh God. I refuse to be a spectator. You can change my story. Make sure you are praying. Lord, every spirit, go to the root of my problem, so God, that every force of darkness that is responsible for the situations in my life, it must be addressed tonight. It must be addressed tonight. That spirit that has tied my family down, tied my destiny down, tied my womb down. Those outside, make sure you're praying. No matter how far you are, the Lord is seeing your faith. You are enduring the cold because you want your destiny to change. You will not be disappointed tonight. the God that answers all flesh. is showing me a vision. I'm seeing I'm seeing a vision I'm seeing a vision and in this vision I'm seeing 
chains. This is what I'm seeing. Before I even start the mass prayer, I'm seeing chains. And those people are affected. The power of God is going to begin to come upon them, inside and outside. I'm seeing chains. This is the spirit of delay. I'm seeing delay written in the atmosphere. Delay. Delay. I'm going to begin to pray. Listen, there are people whose lives and destinies have been held bound by the spirit of delay. By the spirit of delay. No matter where you are, inside or outside, it's like a force, an energy of the spirit. I want to help those people outside here. Lift your hands. Just keep your hands lifted inside and outside. Just lift your hands. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands towards you. And as I stretch my hands towards you and begin to speak, it's like fire. The power of God will begin to come upon such people. Those who are outside, you can stretch your hands just over your, your various projectors. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That spirit. I speak to you in the realm of the spirit. You have held the destinies of men and women. You have held the destinies of families. But the Bible says upon Mount Zion. There shall be deliverance and holiness. And the sons of Jacob will possess their possession. Therefore, I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus and I speak every spirit of delay right now, right now, right now. I stretch my hands by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I stretch it right now. Bring them out. Say, yeah, of multiplied grace. I stretch my hands. The angels of the, of the Lord are moving. Road to row, road to row, road to row, it will get to your turn inside and outside. Road to row. If that's not your situation, it will not affect you, but you will never stand the power of God. If this is one of the reasons God brought you here, right now, I stretch my hand outside. Lift your hands. The angels of the Lord are moving. Lord, every row, every row, I keep my hands stretched. That devil of delay, you must leave. You must leave. You must leave. The second overflow, God is touching people there. The second overflow, like fire, is coming upon people. The second overflow. That spirit of delay. Your time is up tonight. Your time is up tonight. Maka para dosotosh embrekete leko sheketa. There's a lady wearing white hair tie. The anointing of the spirit is causing that delay. That delay right now. That delay right now. Right now, right now, right now, it's a spell, it's like a charm. I'm seeing it on the heads of people. I command that spell, that charm of delay. You must leave. You must leave. You must leave. Shabarakatabaroto Supreme. Shakabakata, shakatakata, shakatatate. I tell you, no spirit will stand the power of God tonight. No, you must let them go. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I come against you. I come against you. I come against you.
Delay is a dangerous thing. It traps your life so that when you ought to move and make significant progress, it will hold you bound. There are many lives and destinies that are tied down families please lift your hands the Lord is telling me that he wants to visit the root of witchcraft in families pay attention to what I'm saying because the power of God will move in a mighty way there are families here hear me you love God, but you do not know what is at the root of the tragedies of the families. There are spirits, there are covenants, there are fraternities with darkness that have kept families bound. It may not even be your fault. You are inheriting the wickedness of men. But tonight, lift your hands. I want to pray for you. 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 As I speak over your life, again, the Lord is going to be ministering to families. It may not have anything to do with you as a person. Some of you, you will step into visions immediately and begin to see a lot of destruction and havoc going on. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying right now. Inside the first overflow, the second overflow across the road, every family that is under the influence of any satanic manipulation, Lord, you will not only identify them, they must be free. At the count of three, I want you to shout, I am free. Are you ready now? One. Two, three. Shake it, take it, take it, shake it, take it, take it, All tasks, all tasks, all tasks, all tasks. I call you by your name, and I curse you by the God of heaven. I call you by your name. All tasks in Benway State. Altars in Kogi State, altars in Kaduna State, altars in the West, altars in the East. My goodness, Shekete Koto Kete, Rekete Tekete, Rekete Kota. Every local government, every state, I set fire on those altars. Fire. Fire, fire, fire on those altars. Fire on those altars. Every covenant with the waters, every covenant with the air, every covenant with the earth, every covenant of darkness, tying families. I declare that this is your time of jubilee. I send a word of judgment. I send a word of judgment. Hallelujah. I wish the Lord can open your eyes to see the mighty things that are happening. Mighty things that are happening. Hallelujah. Listen. Something very strange will start happening here now. Listen. Listen to me. Because I just saw a vision like a bunch of keys. It just dropped on the ground. Listen. This, this is a sign of access in the spirit. The Lord showed me a vision 
and I saw in the spirit a bunch of keys. Now it's not for everybody, but I'm about to pray. Once it comes on you, except God did not call me, you will see doors open. It's called breakthrough. Lift your head. I stand under this apostolic anointing. And in the name of Jesus, every destiny that needs this breakthrough at the count of three, receive it, receive it. Take it now. 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 I distribute those keys in the spirit. I distribute those keys inside and outside. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. By the blood of the eternal covenant. Breakthroughs. 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 The opening up of destinies the opening up of destinies the opening up of destinies sheka bakata labatosh shekete kata baba kaparato shokotosh emprekete lekotoshata Listen, those of you outside, I want you to hear me because the Holy Spirit is going to do something now. The Lord asked me to come out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want count three. My goodness, there is such anointing in this place. And I see the angels, the Lord. The moment you count three, I'm going to start moving across this crowd and the power of God will start falling on people. Whatever has locked your destiny, it must open it right now. Are you ready now, those outside? Please believe we are not playing games. Father, in the name of Jesus, may the angels move in this crowd. In the name of Jesus, at the count of three, shout at one, two, three. Receive it right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. I stretch my hands as I move across. Let an anointing come. As I pass your row, as I pass your row, you will stand it. As I pass your row, an anointing, an anointing. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Take it. Take it now. I stretch my hand. Take it. Take it. This side, receive it. Take it now. 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 I stretch my hands. Take it now. Take it now. Everyone in this row, receive it right now. Receive it right now. Take it now. All those here, there is an angel of the Lord standing on your row. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Just allow me to pass your row as I'm coming. There are angels walking with me. As I'm coming, the power of God will touch you right now. I stretch my hands here. Everyone here, right now, take it now. Take it right now. Take it right now. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands to you. Call this man, come. This big man, come. What's your name? Come now, let's hurry up. What's your name? The Lord is saying, what's your name? Daniel. Daniel, from where? From Edo State, sir. From Edo State. I mean, are you in Zaria? Zaria. You are in Zaria. I want you to rejoice because you have entered a new level this night. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As you celebrate them, you connect to their prophecy. Listen, because I'm seeing you in a cage. This is what I see. I've not started prophesying yet. But I'm seeing you in a cage and I'm seeing you telling the Lord, I know that if I come here, my situation will change. In the name that is above all names, I lay my hands upon you and I end that captivity right now. Take it right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is grace? There's someone grace around here. Who is grace? I'm hearing that the Lord is showing me someone grace. Who is grace? Please come quickly. Let's save time. Come. Where is your mother? Zambia. 
Zango. Is she sick? Don't worry, is your mother sick? She doesn't even know she's sick, but she's sick. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord going to your house and healing two people, your mother and your sister. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your mother and your sister, what do you do? You're a student. What do you do? Huh? Applicant. Job applicant. Do you believe that if I pray for you, the Lord will give you a job? Will you come and testify before God's people? I lay my hands upon you and I release that job for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. From this road down like this, there are a number of ladies with abdominal pain because I'm seeing like the angel of the Lord is giving something. I stretch my hands right now. Whoever they are, the power of God is coming upon them right now. Right now, right now, right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that pain, that abdominal pain must go. It must go right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let me try to walk to the first overflow. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me. You will start experiencing the power of God in your life in a very strange way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I lay my hands upon you right now. Step into a new season. I want to pray for this overflow. There are so many people. Please believe God. Don't think I've come outside because I want to identify with you. So you don't think you are at a disadvantage. No. Distance is no barrier. Some of you are enduring cold. It's touching my heart. Talk more of the heart of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And some of you need to watch because what you are seeing me do is what you will be doing in some years to come. So just watch it. You are just receiving miracles. There is an impartation. Joseph. Who is Joseph? Here. Joseph. I'm hearing a name, Joseph. You are wearing like a collar, like for cold. Who is that? You are Joseph. The Lord is going to do mighty things through you. Stand up. There's cold so you don't enjoy yourself. Are you hearing me? I want you to stay true with God and watch God do great things in your life. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing two old women. They are sitting on the same seat. Where are they? Here, this row. Two mama like this. Where are they? Is there some? Who is that? The Lord is asking me to talk to them. Just leave them. Mama, do I know you? Have we seen before? I'm looking at you. Can, can they? If they cannot hear, we can speak any language. Can I talk to you, Mama? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing the spirit of death over your head. Don't be afraid. I'm seeing the spirit of death over your head. And the Lord is saying, if we don't pray for you, that's how you'll be getting up and a bike will collide with a car. It's like a station wagon and it will kill you for nothing. But the Lord is saying, I should pray for you. The second thing is there's no finances at all. Everything is flat. Is that true? Is that true in your life? Is what why you came? Where is your daughter? Do you have a daughter? Huh? I'm seeing a lady close to you. Like a, a, I don't know if she's a, a daughter or a logical or not. Because I'm seeing the Lord is saying that he wants to bless her with marriage. You are the one? Okay, you are the one standing close to her. Are you ready to marry? Because God is going to surprise you. Do you believe that? Huh? Say, I receive. I receive. I receive. You are not, you are, you are trying to be a lady, but my dear, prophecy. You see a madman like this. I'm only responding to God. Just out and see what the anointing does. Shout, I receive as loud as I receive. Jesus Christ, I break that curse over your head. Mama, you will not die. All of you here, stretch your hands to her and say, Mama will not die. Take her as your mother. Pray for her. Mama will not die. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm looking at this other mama. I don't know what's wrong with this woman. But there are three things I see the devil want to do. Number one, eyes. Huh? But two, I'm seeing her inside a coffin. They have already closed it. And there's blood on top of the coffin. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Somebody used her eyes to make money with it. This is what the Lord is showing me. I'm not a prophet of doom. Me too, I don't like what I'm saying. But I cannot but say what God is asking me to say. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm seeing a lady here. I'm, I'm still going to come in, please. We're trying to work with the time. Um, but I'm seeing a lady here. 
how you will know is the power of God is about to come upon you right now. One of the ladies here, this is witchcraft that has destroyed the life of your family. And the Lord wants me to minister to you in this other overflow. Father, wherever she is right now, locate her. The power of God is going to come on one lady right now. It will be like fire. You can't stand it. It will come upon you. Please, when that happens, let me know that lady right now. Not just those inside. I know God is... But this role, this role, Father, wherever that lady is, I'm declaring right now by the anointing of the Spirit of God that she will be located so that her family can be free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um, your name means joy. It's a tribal name, but it has joy. It's like it. Who is that person, please? Your name means joy. That's if you translate your name, it has something to do with joy. Joy or joyful or something like that. Do we have someone like that? Please make sure you are telling the truth so that it doesn't look like we're acting. If, if you are that couple with the protocol, who is that? What's that? Come. What's your name? What I means what? Child of joy. I want to pray for you. Where is your mother? She's in Kaduna. Is this working? Okay. Tell your mother her time will lay hands on you. And I want that if you go back and see your mom, just ask her to allow you to break through. My hands upon you right now. I don't mean their English names are Joy. What's, what's your name? From where? All of you, your names. You're okay, I'm going to talk to you. Let me talk to you. Come, my dear. Where is your family? Kaduna, I'm going to pray for you. Because that has tied your family down. I look at me, look at me. Does it make sense to you? The Lord is dead because I'm seeing your family tied down in witchcraft. And God is saying that he's lifting them up by his grace. Father, let it end right now. Out of this family. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I lay my hands on all of you. I lay my hands on all of you. I lay my hands upon you. Help her, please. Help her. So that she Who is that? In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. For you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Please hold on. There is a lady wearing white scarf. She's on at the wall. She's leaning on the wall. Where is that lady? Please bring her. I'm seeing in a vision. There's a lady wearing white scarf. White scarf. Is there someone like that? You are leaning on the fence. White scarf. Who is that? Is there someone like that? Give God a praise. Who is that? What's your name? Favor. But there's nothing favorable in your life. And the Lord is saying, change her story. Do I know you? That your name is Favor? I want to pray for you. Do you believe if I pray for you, the Lord will grant you favor? Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, I restore favor to you right now. I restore favor to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Come, my dear. This lady, yes, come. Hallelujah. There is an anointing. Listen. There is an anointing. Um, I promise those of you outside, by the grace of God, hopefully by next miracle service, will try to work on amplifying the sound so that it will... It will be very clear for you outside. All right? I know that the people did their best, but you can see that the crowds are increasing. Praise the Lord. But there was an anointing that was upon Esther. It's called the favor anointing. In the course of the meeting, I'm going to be praying for people. But the Lord is saying I should minister this to you. Do you believe it? Huh? Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon this lady and I release this grace upon her. In the name of Jesus. I release this anointing upon her in the name of Jesus. I release this anointing upon her in the name of Jesus. 
who came from Kano. I'm seeing Kano. Come. You are not alone. You are with one lady. Where are you? Huh? Two of you. Husband and wife. Come. Did you tell me you are coming? Come. She's your friend. Who is she? How are you, my dear? You came from Kano. What do you do? I'm see. I, I'm, no, you are not just a student. There's something else you are doing. I'm teaching. You are teaching. How about her? Witchcraft is what God is breaking now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because I'm seeing something like a chain leaving your friend. I command that chain to leave right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I lay my hands upon you and I, I command that chain to go. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for you I declare. You will step into a new dimension of intimacy with God. That's what you need. You have been praying. Even fasted. Help him. You fasted that God will give you an anointing. It's not an anointing for ministry. It's an anointing for fellowship with God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of 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 Jesus Christ. Look at me. What has happened to your music ministry? That's what the Lord is saying I should tell you. Huh? Do you sing? Sing something. Let's hear. My God is awesome. He will move the whole world. What has happened to your music ministry? God gave you an anointing. You have been playing games with it. Come. Because God wants to restore that fire. As soon as I pass you, I saw, I saw, I heard like music and God says restore his music ministry. There are three things that can destroy a man's ministry, any ministry. One, pride. Huh? Two, women or men or anything. Just human beings. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then number three is premature exposure. When people don't stay with the spirit to create a track record. But I'm going to pray for you. Huh? you your characters, you, you, must, you must behave well. Behave like where you are going. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is, you, you need a lot of restoration in your life. It's not because anything is wrong. You, it's just that you need to step up. Otherwise, you will not experience the grace of God. But there is an anointing upon your music ministry. And I lay my hands upon you right now. You step into that level in the name of Jesus Christ. All of you here, please lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Please. Lift your hands and believe. As I pray for you, and I count three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. There are people here under yokes and spells. As soon as you shout that name Jesus, the anointing of the Spirit will move through this very overflow. This very overflow. I wanted to leave, but God is still speaking to me about this overflow. Please, I want you to believe. Help them so they don't fall inside the gutter. Father, I'm doing as you have instructed me. And I prophesy right now. That as they all shout the name of Jesus, let the power of God visit the foundations of every family represented here. Are you ready now at the count of three? One, two, three. Right now, in the name of Jesus, right now, help them, right now. In the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit from your life and your destiny. There is a, a man that appears to one lady here. As I pray for you now, fire is coming upon you. You will never see that man again, not in your dreams. I command him, go, 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 go. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring you deliverance by the power of the Holy Spirit. It never comes to you again. Never, never. Never in the name of Jesus, greater strength, greater prayer fire, greater prayer fire, greater prayer fire in the name of Jesus. The lady with the black heart, tap that lady for me. Look at me, stretch your hands where you are. An anointing is coming upon you right now. Beauty for ashes, says the spirit. Beauty for ashes. I release that anointing upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, before I leave this place, there are seven people. The spirit of prayer is coming upon you right now. Seven people. Lord, where are they right now? Right now, across this place. Seven people. It's like fire to come upon you. Some are men, some are women. Take it. Take it. Take it right now. Take it right now. The spirit of prayer. The spirit of prayer. The spirit of prayer. 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 The spirit of prayer. Like never before. Tap this lady for me. The Lord is visiting you and he's wiping your tears. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is saying he's wiping your tears. By the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord is wiping your tears. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is wiping your tears. Let it end right now. Let it end now. Now. Never to return to you again. Never to return. I stretch my hands all over this room. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Every force of darkness never returns. In the name of Jesus, there is a spirit I'm dealing with. I know what I'm seeing right now, right now. I judge you by the God of heaven. Right now. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing the hands of certain people tied here. Like a chain holding your hands. Those of you here, just lift your hands. Don't worry. Once it constants you, you cannot stand it. Father, visit them right now. You will feel like literally fire on your hands. The chain is breaking right now. I stretch my hands. Let it break. Let it break. Let it break. Let it break. Let it break now. Now, 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 now. Let it break. I break it by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Now. I break that chain in the name of Jesus. I break that chain in the name of Jesus. I break that chain in the name of Jesus. I restore your glory. I restore your glory in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, please pray and ask the Lord to visit you. Pray and ask the Lord to visit you. Aha. Aha, you must go. In the name of Jesus, you must go. Go, go, go. Any spirit represented here, you must leave right now. I tell you, any force of darkness tying down your life. Who is this, mama? Hold on, please. Hold on. Who is this, mama? My brother. What's wrong with your marriage? This person I'm seeing was supposed to die October 21st. It's because of prayer. Because you used to carry this picture everywhere you go. I'm seeing you in a meeting. Stand up, madam. I'm seeing you in a meeting. No, 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 please. This is, help her with a handkerchief. This is a mother. You don't have to cry, please. This woman you are seeing is a very good woman. I'm seeing you in all kinds of meetings. You are not even concerned about your own problem. You are lifting up this person because I'm seeing 21st October. He was to be to die and please, Mama, it's okay. It's okay. The Lord will help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because you too, you have problems. But you are not even concerned about your problem. You are not concerned about what is happening to your finances. You are not concerned about the pain in your back. You keep feeling pain in your back when you wake up. As I enter here. I hear my pain go just go away. The pain just went away when she came here. Look at this. Even before the meeting. From Kaduna, me and my... Hold on. Okay. I'm all away from Kaduna. We, my children sleep with your, with your scriptures. We work with your scriptures. Even if I will go and pass you read, the scriptures is on. The two of them are pastors. One is here. The other one is here. Finish university here. Pray, I'm a widow. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. I have a ministry. <laughs> you have a ministry. My goodness. Can you imagine? I'm looking at you. What is, I'm seeing your ministry has something to do with spring. Spring. Say spring. 
in the name that is above all names. Mama, listen. The Lord is visiting you. Because this woman you see is an intercessor. This woman can stay for hours praying for people who are not even, it's none of our business as the Holy Spirit ministers to her. You see, but nothing is changing in your own life. You pray for people and God will do miracles. Is that true? The Lord says I should tell you your whole life will change. Amen. Hallelujah. Please come, follow me. Mama, the Lord is wiping. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord is wiping your tears. Who is this? Huh? Ah, mommy, this is not your son. Hold on. This boy is not your, you are calling him son, but he's not your son. Because I'm looking at him and I'm not seeing a father. Where's your father? He's dead, sir. Father is dead. And this is what the Lord, I'm looking at him and I'm not seeing father. It's like the father is related to you. He's my elder. Brother. And so you took him as your son. That's why you are calling him son. But this boy is not your son. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord is going to use you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord is going to use you mightily. Huh? Mommy, you, God is wiping your tears because this finance, the thing can't just enter your hand. It will enter and go out and we have to pray because the people that killed his father want to destroy you and we have to pray. I'm not, I don't want you to feel bad. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's gone and gone. But we are not just going to allow it happen until they come and kill mama and it's because of the destiny of this person. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord is going to visit you in a way that will surprise you. What's wrong with you? You see, Ba, what the Lord is showing me, I'm not going to say everything here, but what the Lord is showing me, today, they will see that he has one sickness. They will do another test. Huh? They will do a scan and come out with something else. The devil is just playing, using medicine to play with your mind. This is witchcraft. They have already buried this person and this issue has finished. But in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm declaring and I'm speaking to everyone here. I stand under the anointing and I pray for you that every power that is tying down your family, it must leave you this night in the name of Jesus. It must leave you this night. It must go, 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 go. The same thing, it must go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please come, madam. The Lord is saying I shall anoint you. Come. You are going to do great things for God. God is going to use you greatly. I know you may not think you are like that, but God will use you from today. I open your eyes to the realm of the spirit. You will step into unusual dimensions of grace. I activate dimensions in your spirit. Elisha prayed and the eyes of the servant was open. I open your eyes to visionary encounters. In the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands towards our mother here. This woman's situation has really touched me. Come, mama. No, 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 mommy, please stand up. Stretch your hands and let's pray for our mother. All the way from Kaduna, a woman with a ministry interceding for others. This is our brother. The devil wants to terminate the life of this person. I'd like us to pray over this picture and say in the name of Jesus, the same power that raised Christ from the dead. The same power that raised Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. Mommy, will you believe if I tell you you are stepping into an unusual healing ministry from tonight? Listen, you believe with all your heart. Have you forgotten the dream God showed you where you saw yourself in a meeting praying for people? I believe, I saw it. So, I remember. Did you tell me? It's, now is the time for that dream to come to pass. Because you had a dream. You saw yourself praying for people. I'm just praying, healing them. And you are healing them. And you have been interceding innocently. The Lord is telling me that now is the time for your ministry to step into another level. Two areas. The issue of barrenness. The issue of barrenness. It will be like a special anointing to destroy barrenness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
you will come back and testify before the people of God. This thing is being recorded. And the second area, the second area is HIV. Such an anointing will come upon you as you pray for people with HIV. Listen, Paul said, I desire to see you. He said that I may impart some spiritual gift. It doesn't matter the age, impartation can happen. Are you hearing what I'm saying, madam? Hold my hands. I want you to shout Jesus and watch what begins to happen to you. Go ahead. Jesus. Father, I pray from today an anointing, an anointing, a transference of grace. An ordinary woman will become a woman of power from today. An ordinary woman will carry an anointing of the spirit in a strange way. In a strange way, go and heal the sick. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Come, madam. Look at me. Come. Watch this. Mommy, lay your hand on him and pray for him. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Lay your hands and speak to him. Look at me. You carry this anointing and you will wreak havoc in the kingdom of darkness. Anointing is not for show, brothers and sisters, but I tell you, it will scare you. This anointing will bring wealth to you. People will sow into your life because of the impact in her life. Come on. Go, when you go back, lay this picture on your brother and pray for him. God will take him out of that hospital. And when he does, bring him here and he will come and testify to the glory of God. The Lord told me he's wiping your tears. Come, sir. What do you do? What do you do? What did you study? I'm going to pray for you. You want to further? Yes, sir. Ready to go fast. Because God is going to use you in the area of leadership. It was in, in prayer God put in your spirit to study political science. Amen. Although what you studied, um, I'm not seeing a university like a college or something. College of education. Federal College of Education. You study something that has to do with education. Business education. Business education. But then it's leadership. And God is taking you to that position. When you study it, it will make you a great leader. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? Amen. Wait, Mr. Man. Just wait. Let me finish. I'm praying for you. Make sure when God blesses you, you never forget this woman. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You never forget this woman. She has done what for you many people will not do. She has taken you as a son. She has spent her money to the last to help you. Is that true? If you forget this woman, God will not be happy with you. Let me use this as an encouragement. You see, when somebody suffers to help you and you rise, you will be a wicked person to forget that person. Some of us are like this. Some of our parents have labored to help us. Don't say, I must be a millionaire before I bless them. The day God gives you 20,000, you can take 1,000 and say, Mama, take. Some of us are very greedy. God is blessing you, but you are still latching onto the little resources of the parents. It must change. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Father, take him to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus, I impart upon you wisdom and leadership. Occupy that mountain. Fire is coming upon your hands. In the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. Father, visit our mother. For what you have done, Mama, my God will visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you from the depth of my heart. My God will visit you. In the name of Jesus. Please bring this woman for me. This one wearing this very one. Yes. This, she's, she's not feeling fine. Something is wrong with her. Please let her come. Is God blessing you tonight? Who brought her? Please, who brought her? If you brought her, please come with her so that we'll know. The 
this or that. What's wrong with her mother? Diabetes. Diabetes. How old is she? Do you know? Oh, you just met her. Or you know her. Okay, she's your junior sister. From where? Can she hear me? Or do you need somebody to talk to her in the language? You need translation. If I talk to you, can you talk to her in the language? Tell her that Jesus Christ is going to heal her of diabetes. What tribe are you, madam? Eh? He got her up as to Alpha now. Carry mic. What are you here? Oh, yeah, yeah, carry mic. Because I'm trying to. Let's make this thing easy. Give him mic, please. Every tribe here, there must be somebody. There's nobody who lay hands on somebody for the purpose. There's no other mic. Okay, don't put it there. Come, Pastor. Tell her that Jesus Christ is going to visit her. Jesus, I chop down. Diabetes. What couldn't she do? Mama, ask, tell her I'm going to pray for her and the power of God will come to you. And me and her will run here now. I'm going to pray for her and we will not walk, we will run together. Tell her not to worry. Let's pray. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, I rebuke you. Down. Diabetes. Diabetes. Her body. In the name of Jesus. If we do Jesus. Look at what is happening to her. It's a spirit. Look at, are you seeing this? Look at the spirit. You call it sickness. Look at what is happening. This is an old woman. Huh? Diabetes is a spirit. I command it to leave now. In the name of Jesus. Out of her. Mama. Tell her that she's going to do what she has never done. And she should not be afraid. Tell her to leave now. Walk, come. Fast, come. Come, come. Turn around. Run, run, come. Come on, give Jesus praise. Look at a miracle here. Look at a miracle. Your leg like this, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, come on. Give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Hold on. Sam, give us one powerful gala song. Where is Sam? You sang one song during Annie's wedding. Eh? Sing that song. Tell Mama she's going to dance now. Eh? And the gala people will join her and dance to the shame of the devil. Hosanna, oh my David, O Chonuka Wama, Hosanna, Hosanna, oh my David, O Chonuka Wama, Hosanna, Hosanna, O my David, O Chonuka Wama, Hosanna, Hosanna, O my David, O Chonuka Wama, Hosanna, Hosanna, O my David, O Chonuka Wama, Hosanna. Shout, shout. This miracle.
miracle remains permanent forever. How many? How many of you saw the way that woman was standing here? You saw the way she was standing. Look how God can change a man's story. Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. God bless you. There is a woman here that they brought. I don't know where she is. But I'm seeing it's, it's something that is a medical condition. I don't know if it's a fibroid or a growth. Please, who is that person? We really have to be fast. A growth, like a, I don't know if it's a growth that the person came with. They, they said the person has something like a growth. I don't know if it's a fibroid now. Whether it's... Eh? No, no, no. The person I'm talking about is here. Oh. It may be inside or outside. I'm seeing somebody. Um, it's like there's a medical condition that has to do with a swelling or growth or something. Who is that? Who is that person? Come. No, your own, you are not sick. It's, it's demons. Just stand. We'll deal with that one now. Now, your, eh? No, no, no. Leave him. This, your stomach is swollen. They want to kill you. Somebody, somebody hit you with something in a dream. Some months back, you didn't even remember. Now your stomach is swelling. We'll deal with that one. I don't know you. I'm just, just stand there. That one is, is an easy something. This come, it come. You have a problem. Come up. The devil. I, the devil wants to destroy this lady because if I don't pray for you they will, I'm seeing your case getting so serious they will now take you to India for a kidney pr transplant what's wrong with you? kidney nephritis what does that mean? Can't lie down here. Yes, I need to. Yes, I need to sleep. You see the wickedness of the devil. That even to sleep, you can't sleep this way. You can't sleep. How, and how else do you sleep? Lie down flat. That devil must leave you. What's your name? You know how? Who knows her? Before you now start talking another rubbish story. Daddy, please come, sir. Uh, uh, daddy. Yes, sir. Our uh, daddy is praying a prayer. And the prayer has to do with, no. The Hold your photo like this, sir. Open it to the third one. That's what I want to talk to you about. One, okay. I'm seeing, okay, I thought it was the third one. But I'm seeing another photo. This thing is like, it's supposed to be three. It's not two. Where is the third one? That's the one I want to talk about. That's why I said take it to the third one. You brought two here. But the person I want to talk about, there is a third one. Who is in that photo? Henry, the particular boy. Henry. Because we want to pray. Demons stop him from coming. Did you ask him to come? I asked him to come. Choose not to. That's what I'm saying. If that boy had come, let me tell you, do you know that if 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 you can come for koinonia alone, you don't want to know the powers you overcame to arrive. Tell somebody koinonia and see the way demons fight they are coming here. Flimsy excuses. They will tell you, uh, I just think I don't have this. It's because the devil knows. He knows. That's what happened to this person. And you see, today would have been his day of visitation. I looked at this and I saw three, because I'm not, you may see me looking at you physically, but I'm operating from the spirit. I saw three pictures and I said, go to the third one. You left the third one at home, just like the person to come. If he agreed, the Holy Ghost would have reminded you and forced you to carry the third one. See, please, brothers and sisters, when you invite people and they refuse, don't insult them. You're a spiritual man. You should know that is to you a sign that God wants them to be here. Are we together now? Daddy, I'm going to talk to you now and I'll pray with you. There's something about him, but I will not tell you in public. Huh? So that you will not hear that this person left the faith into something else. You hear what I'm saying? I don't want, it's not something where this is a public talk. But 
they don't want to hear that kind of story because it's already happening. There is a spirit that converts men. It doesn't happen by default. You must attach it in the name of Jesus Christ. Where is this? Are Come. We are going to pray for this kidney. Both of your kidneys is verified that you have a, a kidney problem. So we are going to pray. Lay your hands on it. Please, can we pray for this dear one? Anything that happens to one of us happens to all of us. Don't say it's not yet my issue. Uh -uh. Pray for her. Your prayer is working. There's a surgery the Lord is doing. Place your hand on her. I command that devil right now, out! Out of her! That spirit masquerading as kidney. Kidney problem. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command a miracle for you right now. I stretch my hands. I make contact by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. My goodness, there's such power flowing. I declare a miracle. I declare a miracle. I declare a miracle. Stand up. Stand up. What couldn't you do before? Press it. Press it right now. No pain. Look, the lady, see, see, the lady is even surprised. Even her, her and her own body, she's even surprised that something is happening. Her and her own body. I pray that God will anoint you to be able to bring healing and deliverance to people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't know how cheap the devil is until you are really anointed. If you are not anointed, you will make a ceremony out of nothing. But when that anointing, it's not about trying to get it done. If it's there, it's there. If it's not there, it's not there. My dear, check it. Honestly, if there's pain, tell us. We will not be afraid. There's... God is touching another lady. Heal her, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Fire is coming on a lady's throat. I don't know what has to do. I'm about to pray for the sick, but I'm seeing throat right now. There is a lady like that. Fire is coming. Something will touch your throat. It's like a sickness. My dear, I'd like you to shout, I am healed. Shout it. Shout it again. Shout it one more time. Go and check yourself and you come back to testify. In the name of Jesus, give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. The anointing is on that lady covering her, her mouth, her nose. This lady, I don't know who she is. I'm not, yes, that very lady you are holding. There's a strong anointing on her. Strong anointing on her. In the name of Jesus Christ, strong anointing on her. We're going to be very fast. Because it's cold and we have to. There's one of the ushers. The power of God is coming on you now. I know you are doing ushering work wherever you are. I'm seeing an usher. Please bring that person right now. An usher lady. Right now. You are busy doing your work quietly. But the anointing of God will land on you right now. Where's the usher? Please bring her. You are an usher. You are doing your work. That's alright but. God needs to visit you now. That you are walking, whether ushering or protocol, you mind your business. There's somebody in welfare, welfare. The power of God is coming on somebody in welfare right now. Welfare department, welfare department. 
I'm seeing an anointing coming on somebody in welfare department. God just does strange things. They are called signs and wonders. We really don't know why it's done. Before we continue, there's one person from protocol. That's what I see in the spirit. Protocol department. The protocol department. There's somebody that the Lord is touching right now. In protocol department, wherever you are, I really don't care where, whether inside or outside. But God is touching somebody right now. Right now in protocol department. It's like fire. It will just come on you all of a sudden. It's a sign and a wonder. It's a miracle. Please let me have those people out. There's a reason why I'm calling them out. That person from Oshri. Who is that? Protocol department. Where's the person? Where's the person? Hallelujah. Bring three of them. It's a prophetic language. I want to tell you what God is saying through this. The first impartation is God prophesying to men that you are entering into new seasons. So just like an usher brings you, it's a prophetic word. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release it upon you. I release it upon you right now. Just like an usher takes you into a new level. I stand under this anointing and I prophesy, enter a new season. Enter a new dimension. In the name of Jesus. The impartation upon the welfare person is the mystery of supplies. The Lord is saying he's ending stagnancy in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is ending stagnancy in the name of Jesus Christ. The person from the protocol, the Lord is saying, I will be your defender even in this season. I release that word upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, everyone that came with a sick person, um, it's already happening to Pastor Femi but Pastor Femi and three members of Rema will come under the anointing right now three members who are members of Rema Chapel that's what I'm seeing as it's happening to him it's happening to three people three people who attend Rema Chapel three people in the name of the Lord Jesus it's a new season for you New season for you. New season for you. By the power of the Holy Spirit. You don't have to bring them out. Just leave them where they are. Hallelujah. We have five minutes to do this. Five minutes because there is the session where I prophesy. Please make sure we are going to try to finish fast. But make sure you receive everything. Don't come and waste your time and stay. Now all those who came with sick people. Apart from those who have been healed, if you brought somebody sick, please bring them out quickly. Quickly, let's lay hands on them. Give us. Please, quickly. The Lord is healing people. There's the healing anointing in this place right now. God is a miracle worker. God is a miracle worker. Please, quickly. No matter which of the overflows, brothers and sisters, there is multiplied grace in this house. Don't come and go back sick. You just need a touch. It's, it's just a touch. There's no need for any long story. So you don't necessarily have to be saying this, what is wrong with me if I don't ask you? Just a touch. Even if you are coming here for the first time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those of us who are out here, Jesus loves you. That's why he wants to heal you. Please, I want you to receive. You can reject it, but I want you to receive it with all your heart. As I pray for you, you go back, check yourself because of time. We may not have time to share testimony, but hold on, please. Let me say something about testimonies. Um, it is, you are robbing God of glory when God gives you healing and blessings. There are so many people who God has been touching, but they never return to give thanks. One of the ways you maintain your miracle is by giving thanks. Please come. Your breakthrough has come. 
Yes, please, madam, come. The Lord is bringing a visitation to you right now. Don't put her up. Just keep her somewhere because the anointing is still on her. And so that she doesn't keep collapsing up and down. Look how many people are trusting God for healing. Ma, please look at me. God is restoring you financially, spiritually. Financially, there is an anointing on you as I speak to you. Financially, spiritually. I'm seeing God step even into your marriage. Our mother is crying. Your marriage. This is the reason why you came. Because there's nothing there. God is stepping in to do a miracle for you. To the glory of his name. Miracle for you. Who is this? Your mom. What's wrong with her? Why didn't you bring her here? Yola. Yola. Hold the picture. Just hold it. I'll use you as a point of contact. Hold it with both of your hands. The power of God will come through the picture to you and will touch her right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let your healing power touch mama. She's in your lab, but touch her, oh God. Right now, in the name of Jesus. God is also bringing speed into your life. Speed, right now. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Speed! I prophesy it upon you. Never to be the same again. And we pray for healing for mama. You will testify in the name of Jesus. The anointing is so strong on you. God is bringing restoration in your marriage. God is bringing restoration in your finances. God is bringing restoration in your spiritual life. I command everything the devil has stolen to give way. In the name of Jesus. There are so many people here and we are going to be very fast. Just a touch. Please, I want you to believe. If you are standing in for somebody, you can agree with them. As you go back, you can touch them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to believe we will be very fast. In the name of Jesus, all over the congregation, I want you to begin to pray in tongues because immediately after this, we'll be prophesying. While you are praying in tongues, pass your prayer request. Both the one for souls and then your prayer request. Please pass it. So ushers, you can split yourself inside and outside. Someone attend to those in the overflows. Please, very quick. Thank you, Jesus. Let your power touch your people right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A glorious God. A miracle right Hold on, let me attend to this gentleman. I promise that we'll look at him. Everybody look if you can look at him from your screens or wherever. You see that when you look at this guy, this is unusual. This is abnormal, right? How long has it been, my brother? Since last year. What happened? I'm just sick. I don't know what is happening to me. So I went to the hospital. They said I should go and do scanning. They said my spleen don't, don't big. What? My spleen don't big. So later on. What is that? The spleen is an organ that reserves blood just below the ribs on the left side. What is it? that it's a cancer is disturbing me. Cancer. Cancer of what? So for now, now I'm still there for this hospital for this uh, shika. So they never told me for cancer for what was still. Who told you about this place? It's my friend. May God bless that friend forever. In the name of Jesus. My brother, look at me. Do you believe Jesus can touch you? I, I believe Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I'm born again. I'm born again, sir. You are serious today. Yes, sir. Very, very serious. Very serious. Do you think he will just watch you just die like that? Do you believe this is weak for your stomach to be swelling? If you have a child and you have the power to help that child and you see the child's stomach swelling like that, will you smile and tell him continue and die? Is that love? So I want you to know that this thing, God has no hand in it. This is the devil. The Bible says, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy the works of the devil. Lay your hands on your stomach. Don't let the name cancer scare you. You understand? It is because of what you have heard, the conditioning in your spirit that has made you feel that it's cancer. 
uh, and made you feel it is distraught. There is the life of God. It's called the way. The very life of God. And I want to pray to you. You believe that? You want to kill that cancer and it must leave your body so that you will not die. I believe that like every other person, you have your plans and aspirations. And this is already threatening you to cut short your life. Huh? Are you married? Where's your wife? Because I'm seeing your wife crying. Your wife is already thinking now and saying that this is how my husband will die. And I'll have to start looking for another man to marry me. The devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus. Father, do a miracle for this brother. We know that cancer is a spirit. In the name of Jesus, cancer, die. Die. In the name of Jesus. The condition for your disappearance in this body, we bring them to place. And I'm prophesying in the name of Jesus that this cancer will die and it will leave your body forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will return and you will testify. Make sure you testify when God gives you a breakthrough. What's your name? Sarah. Oh, Sarah. So make sure you testify in the name of Jesus Christ. I worship forever, I worship forever, I worship forever, Lord. I worship forever, I worship forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're getting into the most important. Please, those outside, can we rise? This is a very prophetic moment. Hallelujah. This is a very, very serious moment. The requests here contain the names of loved ones. I want you to know that everyone is an evangelist this year. There is, there is need for massive salvation. The Lord spoke to me and said he's trusting that he will find the people who will bring souls this year like never before. And I told him, I said, Lord, I'm available. So make sure that from now till December, you don't come alone. We, we are on a mission. Not just to ease ourselves of the guilt of not being soul winners. It's serious business. Hallelujah. Please, those who are yet to submit the names of their loved ones that you are trusting God for them to be saved and then our requests. Very quickly, we have a few minutes. Now, we're going to do it in this order. The moment, let me make an altar call before we pray for this so we can conserve our time. There are people here 
Hear me. First overflow, second overflow across the road. Listen. There are people here, probably you were invited and you know that you need to make your ways right with Jesus. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, he so loved you, and he demonstrated that love by giving his all, his one and only begotten son. Please, by the way, I don't want you to miss the series we are starting next week. We are taking a series on the gospel. We are going to be examining who Jesus is and the message that he brought. What is the content in the gospel that really saves men. So, this is profound. We preachers have been distracted teaching people on restoration and demons. We need to get back and let people understand who Jesus is, what message did he bring, and why is it very powerful? Where are we really going with all this Christianity thing? So, it's a powerful series. You don't want to miss it. We'll be having that all through February. Praise the Lord. It will rattle the foundation of your understanding about God and will be walking in exchange. Hallelujah. For instance, let me give you a little preview. Um, the message of Jesus, when he came, his message was just one word, repent. That's all Jesus said, repent. So we're going to be checking what does it mean to repent? Does it mean to come and emotionally answer a, a, a poem? To repeat after the man of God, what, what is the what is the jurisdiction of that word repent? Hallelujah. So this is very, very important. I'm going to make an altar call now. And while the people march forward, please clear the way for them. We'll stretch our hands and be interceding first for souls. Leave the issue of your needs. We're going to intercede. You wrote their names, you know, call them by their names and say, Lord, we receive their salvation. If you save me, you can save them. You don't want to watch your family members in hell. And they are calling on you and saying, you know me. We came out from the same womb, but some of them, we know that they are going to hell. There's no confusion about it. God is a God of love. We'll be learning next week. But then the truth is, there is hell. Don't let anybody deceive you. There is a place called hell. There are people there right now. Praise the Lord. You are here. You need to make your ways right with God. You've been hearing preachers talk again and again. Outside. Inside. You probably are making this decision for the first time seriously in your life. Or you've been answering many altar calls. You don't even know how many. And you don't know the name of what you have been doing. And tonight you are saying, I really want to come out and make a decision. Or you have even given your life to Christ. You are a pastor. You are, you know, functioning in the body of Christ. But you know that you need a, a rededication of your life. Things happen around your life, discouragements, God didn't answer your prayer, and he made you to derail out of the way of the Lord. Those two categories of people. I'm going to count one to five. Please, for time's sake, for time's sake, wherever you are, leave your seat and run like there's fire on the mountain. Especially for those outside. One, quickly, God bless you. God bless you. Don't, don't fight it. Win that war tonight. There are so many people coming from outside. No matter how far, don't say it's too far. Make your way to Jesus. God bless you. One. Two. Keep coming, please. Don't stop. Don't let your friend, don't let anyone stop you. This is a destiny decision. You have seen the power of God. You have seen the grace of God. You know that he loves you. That he allowed you to come for koinonia tonight. It's a sign that he loves you and he has great plans for you. Make your way to the front very quickly. While they come, keep coming, please. Stretch your hands towards this request and begin to pray in tongues, please, everybody. Pray in tongues first for the salvation. Forget about your prayer request. Please keep coming. You know you need to be out here. No matter how long it will take, please make your way to the front. No matter what you have done, Jesus loves you and he can give you a new beginning. So make your way to the front. Stretch your hands and let's pray on this request. All of you that are inside, just stretch your hands as a point of contact. Those outside, stretch your hands towards the screen and let's pray. Shegata pradagada baladabash. Mam brotoko topo shoto pradagada baladabosh. Ragada baratoko soto pradagada baladabosh. Shekaba bakata baladabash. Shekaba roko topo sh. Mante krotos kobara balash. Lord, we pray for every soul. Every soul, every soul, every soul, every soul, every soul, every soul in this place. 
Lord, save them. Some of them are not even Christians. Save them to the uttermost. Young and old, we receive their salvation. Give them dreams. Give them encounters. You died for them. They must not go to hell. You have great plans for them. They need to experience the love of Jesus. We intercede for their souls. We intercede for their souls. We intercede for their souls. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, save our fathers. Save our mothers. Save our brothers. Our classmates. Our colleagues in the office. In the name of Jesus. Our families. No matter how far they are from the cross. Bring them to meetings. Give them encounters. Holy Spirit. We permit your ministry in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now begin to pray over your request. Lay your hands over your request. By faith. And say, Lord, I turn it into a testimony. Go ahead and pray. I turn it into a testimony. I turn it into a testimony. I turn it into a testimony. Shake up a barraco to proscopas. Father, give your people testimonies, breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus, we bring this before your altar. Give your people manifold testimonies, manifold testimonies, manifold testimonies, manifold testimonies, manifold testimonies. Manifold testimonies in the name of Jesus. Manifold testimonies by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, we pray for every soul represented here. We release angels of salvation wherever they are in the name that is above all names. We authorize these angels to hunt for their souls. They will know no peace till they find the cross. In the name of Jesus Christ. We release dreams. We release visions of Jesus. We release encounters with the world. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere they turn to, they will hear the gospel. They will hear it in church. They will hear it in class. They will hear it everywhere. For those who have vowed that they will not give their life to Christ. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we, we place their stubbornness side by side with the blood of Jesus. And we declare that their souls must be saved. And not only saved, they will be saved, added to the church and established in righteousness. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for these requests. Lord, right here are, humanly speaking, impossible situations. But Lord, as I walk upon them, they become testimonies. As I walk upon them, they become testimonies. And Lord, your people will stand to testify in the presence of everyone. Healings and miracles and breakthroughs and salvations and restorations. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, those of you who are making this decision for Jesus Christ, I love you from the depth of my heart and I thank you for coming out to accept Jesus Christ. It's a very noble decision. Hallelujah. There's no need to feel as if you are going to hellfire. It's an exciting thing because it looks natural, but it is supernatural in every way. Lift your right hand and say this after me. I'm just guiding you. But it's, it's, it's the truth from your heart that really sets you free. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you. 
with all my heart. Some of you, as you are praying, you will literally feel things leaving you as you are praying. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and I am the life. Say after me again, Lord Jesus, I believe in you and I love you with all my heart. I accept that I cannot help myself and I ask you tonight, save me, cleanse me in the name of Jesus. Everything in me that is not from you, I command to leave me right now. I declare that I have eternal life in my spirit. I'm a child of God. My goodness, I sense such heavy anointing of the Holy Spirit. Even just right here in the altar, right here, I'm sensing that there is such a strong anointing ministering to people. Ministering to people. Something is entering you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who are getting born again, as you are getting born again, some of you are getting filled with the Holy Ghost instantly instantly because i see the power of god coming on some of you in the name of jesus say after me from today i'm a child of god the life of god is in me i will never be the same in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted i pray for you by the power of the holy spirit may you become mighty men and women of the spirit in the name of jesus may god do great and mighty things in and through your life I really pray for you from the depth of my heart. May you never go back to the systems of this world again. May the Holy Spirit guide you. May he instruct you and teach you. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you be established in righteousness. In Jesus name I pray. May God bless you. I'd like you to follow the lady waving her hands. She will have your details. And I promise that we'll send you a text and we'll follow you up. May God bless you. In Jesus name follow the lady very quickly. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please everyone stand. Everyone stand. I want to speak over your life now and please, I want you to pay attention. Those outside, this is when everybody gets to receive something mighty upon their lives. I believe in the power of prophecy. I believe in its ability to change the course of your life. Please let's prepare the announcement quickly so that We have seen in this house what God has done with prophecy. When Pastor Alpha came up here, he was admonishing us and he told us, he said, you don't just believe in the Lord, but you believe in the prophets that he has put. This is not human worship. It's an election of grace. God sends men and anoints them with apostolic and, and prophetic mantles and graces. Because he wants to use the words through them to step into your life and destiny. There will be radical change as I, I prophesy over your life. Lift your hands. Jesus. Inside and outside, lift your hands. The power of God is strong. I already feel like fire on my hands. I speak over your life. A dimension of speed you have never seen. A dimension of speed you have never seen. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Inside and outside, let a mantle come on you for supernatural speed. In the name of Jesus. spiritual blindness everything covering your eyes from accessing insight in the word of God you need insight your life is at the mercy of the spiritual insight you have I'm praying for you like a veil torn from a man's eyes I command that veil to be torn right now I command that veil to be torn right now I command that veil to be torn right now I speak against the spirit of limitation that force from hell it allows you to move forward but it will say you will not cross this border in the name that is above all names I come under this anointing this night and I command whatever limit you have seen in your life I break it tonight 
I break that limit tonight in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus every strange dream every spiritual encounter of the night that is not orchestrated from heaven every visitation of demons they appear as animals they appear as men as women they appear as all kinds of things seeing yourself in primary school wearing all kinds of things i don't care what it is in the name that is above all names i command judgment upon those spirits now i command judgment upon those spirits now every voice that calls you forth in your sleep and programs tragedy over your destiny the bible was not it didn't leave us in darkness as to what happens when men sleep i pray whatever calls you forth in your sleep and reprograms your destiny so that you wake up into tragedies by the blood of jesus i attack those enchanters i challenge their enchantment in the name of jesus christ I pray for you prosperity like you have never seen a dimension of wealth like you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus I pray upon you the same way favor can come on a man like a mantle you can carry it you can know you are carrying help that guy please see this will come on people seriously this ministry has enjoyed a level of inexplainable favor. I'm praying for you. From that which has come upon this ministry, let it come upon your life right now. I release that favor in the name of Jesus. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive that favor. Receive that favor. Hallelujah. I pray for you. And Jabez was more honorable. Listen, honor is not just age. Honor is a mantle. God can, is a distinguishing anointing that sets you apart. And men not only recognize your difference, but they celebrate it. I'm praying for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, from today, an unction comes upon you. A strange grace that makes men to celebrate who you are and what you carry believe me when i say this i pray for you inside and outside from the depth of my spirit that mantle of honor that distinguishing anointing receive it in the name of jesus i pray for your families every project that has refused to be completed i don't care what it is the bible says the hand of zerubbabel that began this work that same hand will complete it i'm praying for you whatever has experienced stagnancy in your family i supply spirit power and i command it to start moving forward in the name of jesus christ every uncompleted project hear the word of the lord tonight I command you to be completed in the name of Jesus. I've said it again and again that the next level of your life is a destiny help I way. Listen, listen. I have seen in my life and I have enjoyed the strange ministry of destiny helpers. Brothers and sisters, God does not need 20 people to change your life. One correct person can just step into your life there was a man who some friends insisted he must be healed they carried him and tossed somebody's zinc and brought him to those are not friends they are destiny helpers my god in the name of jesus i don't know where they are who must appear in your life between now and february but in the name that is above all names i speak to the north i speak to the south I speak to the east. I speak to the west. 
destiny help us come forth now come forth now financial help us come forth now marital help us come forth now academic help us come forth now career help us come forth now if there are no human beings to occupy that position angels must appear in human bodies and perform that role i pray for you the lord told us this year is a year of multiplied grace and influence i want you to go back and meditate on it you already see what is happening in the house the house has entered another dimension and everybody who cares has entered that dimension i pray for you i don't know what level of grace you have been functioning in but i pray listen to what i'm about to tell you in the name of jesus whatever dimension of grace you have seen right now i stand under this apostolic anointing i multiply that grace upon your life i multiply that grace i multiply that healing power i multiply that deliverance power i multiply that grace for favor i multiply that teaching anointing i multiply your influence where you could not have gone by now i pray by the wings of the spirit may you be carried to strange dimensions of influence where your business has not gotten to where your certificate could not have entered in the name of jesus i expand your spiritual borders and i compel influence in your life in the name of jesus christ when you open your mouth to call for help i force your words to enter the ears of an helper in the name of jesus christ i say it again koinonia that if you dare open your mouth to cry for help i declare may that word not die till it enters the ears of your helper i speak to the elements of creation i compel them to come in alignment with your destiny in the name of jesus christ i use the earth as a point of contact every human being works on the earth i speak that anywhere the earth sees you let it compel favor for you some of you may not understand what i'm doing just believe me job said for out of the earth comes bread i command the bread that is buried for your destiny in the earth i call it out in the name of jesus christ i don't know the desires of your heart but i'm praying that between now and the next miracle service that you will come and stand before the people of god and testify to the might of god everything that has brought tears out of your family i judge it right now every career person listen to me we are forcing promotion this year don't say it cannot happen you will fool yourself are you hearing what i'm saying look in the name that is above all names the mystery of lifting may it come upon your life every student here your cgpa has yes and i want to speak to it in the name you had the testimony of that gentleman he didn't even complete the testimony he sent me the text he was praying for 0.11 and that's exactly what he got 0 0.11 and it brought him to 3.50 i pray for you in the name of jesus especially for those who are just starting 100 level you will start with a mysterious gpa that will shock people i pray for those who have tried and tried but your academics is just booking you you have done all you know to do i bail you out of it this night in the name of jesus christ i bail you out of it this night in the name of jesus christ finally i pray for you 
I must pray for your spiritual life. Encounters that you have never had. Listen. You need encounters in your life. You need encounters. You hear people like Bishop Oyedeko mention encounters and what you've transmitted in them. I pray strange encounters with the spirit of God, with the word of God that will launch your destiny to another dimension. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Nothing dies in your hands. I say it again. Nothing dies in your hands. Those who came from far, I prophesy to you. You left all and paid the price to come. Carry an unction that will shock all that know you. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will go back to your campuses. You will go back to your job. You will go back to your homes. With a mysterious anointing that will distinguish you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I declare that the miracles begin in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.